all set. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning. Welcome to our second part of our City Council of Geneva retreat. And I'd like to call the meeting to order and start with our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance Witness to the flag of the United States, United States of America, America and to and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Great. Thank you. And clerk, if you could call the roll, please. Councillor Noon. Here. Councillor Galanese. Here. Councillor Burrell. Here. Councillor Peeler. He's muted and he's looking for his headset, so he can't <laughs> even hear you. Councillor Regan. Here. <laughs> Councillor Salamendra. Here. Councillor Pruitt. Here. Mayor Valentino. Here. We already asked you, Bill, and you were fiddling with your headphones, but we know you're here. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. Um, today we're going to work on 2021 priority setting presentation and discussion. Our city manager sent out uh, a nice um, heads up to kind of some of the topics and some of the questions we'll be talking about today. So I'm going to pass the baton and you might not hear me call your name. You might hear city staff call for you for input um, as much as because we're going to be sharing the screen. It might be a little more difficult for me. So if, uh, if, you're, not, if you're waiting for me, don't wait for me all the time. Okay. Thank you. All right, good morning. So thank you, first of all, it's Saturday morning. Uh, we might typically be doing something else. So I really appreciate uh, the time. So we'll try to keep uh, the sessions uh, moving and us learning from each other. I am gonna share the screen. This is a retreat, so we are gonna use it like a whiteboard. And I'm gonna first kind of go over the agenda and what we're hoping to um, do today. All right. So in a quick nutshell, we're going to go through an overview of session goals. Then we're going to have a brainstorming session. We're going to do a little project sharing of some of the projects that the departments have in the works uh, that align with their 2020 priorities. We're going to do a ranking session, find out if you're carrying over priorities, which ones may have fallen down, which ones may have risen up from last year. We're gonna talk about how you wanna be involved in these priorities. Um, and then uh, one topic that I'd like, we're moving forward with getting the applicants out for the three police boards and wanna just confirm uh, our approach with you. And then we're gonna wrap up with questions today. So I'm gonna start uh, with the overall sessions. We are really wanting to get your direction on your top priorities. We're gonna to wanna to share with you so you kinda of know some of the projects that we're doing that are already kind of naturally fitting in what you care about. We wanna find out from you how to structure your involvement. Um, and then as I mentioned previously, just a quick check-in to confirm the direction for staff to be able to uh, get applicants for you all for the three boards. So during this session, we're gonna take notes. So every time, so we can hopefully capture and you can see it in real time. If there are ideas that come up that maybe don't fit in the structure, we have an idea bank that will be making sure that uh, we don't lose thoughts that you might have as well. And so, because it's hard to see the screen, I am going to, Adam or I will just call on folks uh, to start. And so we're gonna start with the brainstorm session and you were sent uh, four questions that we would love. You can answer them all. You can choose uh, one, whatever you would like to share in regards to, if you were a city manager, one of the department heads, what would you focus on? What would you stop focusing on? What do you wish council would focus on? Um, and the, thinking on that kind of cap of the, the policy side, um, and what do you want to learn more about this year? And so I'm gonna start this morning with Councillor Burrell. Do we have to unmute or can everyone just unmute themselves? Um, if, if I were the city manager or the department head, um, I, I would uh, try to have more communication, um, uh, with the counselors, um, if you had concern with the council, 
Um, I would I would like to see specifically um, the city manager ask us more often uh, what our priorities should be, not just on a yearly basis, but perhaps week to week or a monthly basis. Um, so we can, I'm a task oriented type of a person. I like to see decisions and to get, and to get things done. And um, granted, some things take longer to accomplish than others. Um, but sometimes I, I feel that I don't know how City Hall operates because I'm not sure what they're working on. I'm not, I'm not questioning that they're not working on anything. I just don't, I just don't know what they're working on um, other than the day-to-day -day activities of running the business, which are the business of the city, which, which could take the majority of the time um, uh, that, that, they're, that they're using. But, but for department heads, I, I, I think it would be nice to have more communication with all of the department heads, um, especially if they have questions or concerns, because you know, in, uh, there's no such thing as, uh, as a bad question in, um, in I, and I think if there was more open communication with, with all the departments, especially with us, I think, I think that's good for the community. Um, what would I stop focusing on? Um, well, I would stop focusing on complaining and working towards solutions, quite simply. Um, I'm, I'm not much of a complainer. Um, and and I, and I like to move through and get the questions uh, answered and, and issues solved. Um, what do you wish the council would focus on? Um, I think that probably comes down to the A, B, C, D, and F below for priorities. I'm thinking that's another part of this agenda. Am, am I reading that correctly? You are, but there might be other things I, that... Oh that aren't necessarily in the priorities that you care about, but you can also skip that one. Um, I, I would like council to focus on getting to, <laughs> get, getting along a little bit more effectively um, in, in not throwing darts at one another, which, which occasionally does happen uh, during our interaction. Um, I, I'm, un, I'm uncomfortable with a lot of those things. Um, and uh, what, what do I want to learn more about this year? Um, I would say everything. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sponge for knowledge um, and experience. And uh, I, you know, like I said, I know I'm being vague on some things, but I, 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 like to, I really like to get things done. I'm a goal-oriented person. And, and this sounds really simple, but you know, what, one of the first things I was, I was asked to do, and I think I shared this with Sage. Um, when, one of the first things I was asked to do when I was elected uh, was, was to take care of a situation, a parking situation on Worthington Avenue um, that, that apparently had failed uh, two or three or four times prior. And, and I know it sounds so simple, but it, it was just, great to meet with the people on their porches and give Mark Perry a call and say, hey, Mark, can you meet me on Worthington Ave at 7.30 on Wednesday morning? Um, I, I think I have a solution. And, and I met with Mark at 7.30 in the morning on Worthington Ave. And, and in about a half an hour, we had a solution. And we brought it to the next council meeting and, and uh, the alleged problem was solved. And um, you know, I, I love that kind of thing. And, you know, whether it's a simple uh, task like that or something that takes nine or 12 months to solve or, or whatever it may be, um, you know, I, I, I like to have a task assigned and to follow it through. And, and uh, like someone mentioned, if we, if we have a resolution and, and we pass the resolution, it's nice to follow through to make sure that that what we passed is, uh, is, is seeing the light at the end. So um, we, we were focused uh, you know, on one or two things for the majority of our first 12, uh, 13, 13 and a half months. And, 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 uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to following uh, through with that and seating uh, the volunteers that we need on those boards. and. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see all those things succeed. 
Um, and, uh, but anyway, as far as learning, I'll, I, I want to learn as much as I possibly can as time allows. So, um, I, I, I hope I covered my A, B, C, and D okay. You did. And if I get something in the wrong spot, I'm trying to put where your thought, everyone's thoughts uh, in. Just let us know. That's part of the reason of being able to see in real time. Um, I'll shift I just to ask a question? Yes. Um, Tom, Tom, I don't, but that's not a problem, right? Meeting with department heads. I mean, I, I, I don't know if we have to have formal meetings with them. I mean, I might... <clears throat> Right. That's not, a, it's not a problem. Things haven't changed. Right. You could meet with the new That's, Mark Perry, Joe, if you wanted to, and he'd probably come and show up and help you solve that, a problem. Right. That's, it, it's, it's no problem at all meeting with department heads. In fact, I've, I've, I've already met with uh, Joe Venuti down at the cemetery. So. Um, right. So know, that's not an issue though. Right. So it, that's it's, not something we have to worry about. It, it's not an issue at all. It, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, and I'm it's not. Worried. Okay. We're all open here. We want to be communicating with everybody. Great, oh, wonderful. Uh, Councillor Pruitt. Well, I have to say, we haven't had much time to prepare answers for this since we just got the assignment a day and a half or so ago. But in looking at it, I'd say if I were the city manager, as you probably are aware, what I'd focus on, uh, as financial planning, and I'd probably be working on a, a three and five year plan, and, and stick into that pretty, pretty regularly. Um, in terms of uh, what do I wish the council would focus on, uh, I think really you could skip to the bottom where you were asking us to prioritize uh, various functions, and that would probably answer that pretty well. Uh, and what what uh, what do I want to learn more about this year? Uh, I'd like to learn more about the process of government. Uh, I have to say I'm continually confused at the difference between commerce and government and the way that the two operate. And they're not the same, that's for sure. Uh, and so I'm learning that in order to get things done in government, you have to learn the rules uh, that, that apply here. And I think that's something that the whole council struggled with. We have high ideals, we came in, we wanted to get change and no status quo. And yet there are, uh, there are you know, pretty strong regulations in place and mandates in terms of how we operate. I, I need to continue to learn more of that. Uh, I wanna say that uh, you folks just sent out the, the financial uh, policies, if you will. I don't know how much we've had a chance to look through those and also your fourth quarter report. I love stuff like that. Uh, so I'd like to see more of that kind of sharing uh, in our meetings. I think it'd be great to discuss that material. I don't know if everybody else reads those quarterly reports, but they're great. They really bring you up to date. And I remember even last year you had, here's what we're gonna do in the future. And I looked at that two or three pages pretty carefully and you followed it well. That was part of the reasons for my positive comments when you were giving your report last, last session. So what I'd like to learn more about you this year would be really how, how the system works. Uh, what I wish the council would focus on, I think really we could probably answer a little bit better later on. What am I missing here? Uh, what I'd stop focusing on, uh, one of the things that bothers me is that we, we have sort of a sieve in some respects. I know we do economic or industrial development, but I'm not sure how many jobs are retained in town. And uh, when people retire, isn't there some way to give a, an incentive for them to stay closer versus everybody moving to the town or moving to Florida? Uh, I keep thinking of the two and a half million dollars, if I recall the figure correctly, that we're paying for healthcare benefits for retirees. And, uh, and that's a lot of money. It'd be nice if those people were still contributing to the local area. So I keep wondering, is there some way to maybe give an added benefit in retirement programs for people if they remain local or, uh, or, or some sort of stratified system for, for benefits that perhaps the, the unions would allow? So that would be something, in my opinion, be interesting to check into. And I think it ties into many of the things that Bill Peeler has talked about uh, trying to manage better in the past. So any questions? That's great. Thank you for sharing. Well, you bet. Uh, let's, we'll go to Councillor Peeler next. That is not fair. I just took a bite of egg sandwich. Um, thank you. But what, really, but what's fair? I'm teaching my kids life isn't fair. How could I complain about that now? All right. So, um, 
I think this exercise is wonderful. I, I prefer I would have preferred it at the end after we kind of saw all these things coming from you, Sage, but I know you're gonna save that as the grand finale. Uh I think there's some I think there's some things on the table if I were the city manager and I'm not, and I'm not qualified to be one. And I think this is a kind of a surreal uh, exercise to try to put ourselves in a position that we may or may not be qualified or have the experience to kind of talk about. But what we do all know is Geneva. Like we all have our own perspectives of Geneva and hopefully like all of us have enough perspective to kind of have a pulse on the city. Um, so what I'd like to see from a management perspective is really um, kind of our our um, a communication line of our economic path and our future in whatever industry we're focusing on. And I can't imagine any other economic indicator that would suggest that um, winemaking, culinary, and hospitality isn't in our future. And I don't know what we're doing to roll the red carpet out or market Geneva as the gateway to the Finger Lakes wine trail. There really is no home base to the Finger Lakes wine trail. You know, it's kind of egalitarian. Maybe it should be that way. Maybe it shouldn't. Um, but the, I don't know. I don't know if a visiting person can actually see all the wineries in the Finger Lakes in one weekend, but if they, if they, if they lodge in Geneva during their wine trail, they can, there's no place for them to go in Geneva where they can experience a, a micro sample of the wineries they miss, not without really looking hard to try to find it. So I don't know if maybe a cooperative with New York State or the Finger Lakes Tourism would be in, involved there. I'm not an economic developer, I don't know, but I just know that we have a massive opportunity and we've had one for 20 years to be the gateway of the wine trail. And we don't, we don't, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if that, but we've, I'm not sure if we've missed the boat on that. So I, I just don't know where we are with our marketing as how we participate in the, in the wine trail. You know, where, how do we fit in that Rubik's cube, right? And I, want, and I think that's, a, that's an opportunity. And if we miss it, it's gonna be a weakness. Um, we also have a lot of things that support those industries. We've got colleges that support uh, culinary and food science. We've got colleges that support winemaking and, and, and great growing. So it's not like we, we won't have a workforce ready to go in that industry, because we will. And we have colleges that produce business and marketing people. So th those, are, those are all gonna strengthen that industry. So I think a partnership with our not-for-profits can be furthered, right? More synergy with those entities would be logical and, beneficia and beneficia beneficial to all. To, to go backwards a little bit, I'd like to really work on staff reports. And I think that's what John was talking about that I've said before, is that we're not gonna be able to do our jobs properly unless we get really qual quality staff reports, whether it's quarterly or every other month. Um, every, time, every time I do research and speak with business and industry professionals and municipal management, they, they always ask me to show a staff report. And I can't do it because we don't, because I don't have, I don't have, we don't have them based on how they've been presented to me and what they look like in other municipalities. So I, I, really, I really would like to see staff reporting because it's gonna help us synergize as a standard operating procedure. Because what we found during COVID is that even though we were struggling as a community and as a city, I think Sage, you reported that we were only 5% under estimated for projects. Like our productivity was still 95%. So that says a lot about what we did to stay at 95% because a 5% loss in productivity could even be attributed to margin of error. That's almost measureless, right? So I, I think we, we need to keep exploring synergy and that and synergy just means how departments interconnect and how can that improve productivity and maybe innovation. Um, and I think Geneva needs to, uh, Geneva as a, we, we, I want to hear more about how we, what experience we provide the people that come here, that live here and, and, and spend money and, and be tourists here, you know, because experience is going to be the economy of the future and not stuff, because stuff becomes more mundane as we become more municipal, we become more technologically advanced. 
There's more computing power in your cell phone than, than, than put the first moon lander on the moon. So as technology becomes less magical, experiences are gonna become more important. So we, I'd like to have Geneva really focus on being an experienced destination. So we're gonna need things for people to do. Um, that's, that, that's, that's more or less it. I know a lot of this was development, but a lot of it is marketing and, and a lot of it is um, kind of our, what our image is going to be uh, communicated out to the general public. Like who are we as a city? And who are we to ourselves and who are we to, to uh, outsiders? And I think our brand needs, needs help and, and has always needed help. And I, I hope we focus on that. Thank you. Great. And as you guys are going in and having suggestions, we're always open to seeing if you see another municipality that might be doing, like we have our quarterly reports right now. We're, we, we're not thrilled about the, the, the layout. We, we keep going, okay, let's tweak it or change it. We have the project matrix versus you know the departments. Totally open to if you see another municipality or another example that said, you know, this, this is a great way to do it. You know, it takes time for department heads to do and we want the time to be well spent and useful. So that's an example, but any of the things that you share, if you see something that a best practice somewhere, you know, send it our, our way. All right, uh, Councillor Noon. All right, uh, I'm just gonna go by my notes. So I guess wherever you wanna put the information is, is fine with me. Um, I think you know the economic development needs to be a, a big priority, and that's something that I would like to see uh, council really focus on this year: uh, promoting economic development, capitalizing on the unique characteristics of our city, which would be the downtown and the lakefront. Uh, I think we really need to work on increasing our tax base, uh, bringing jobs here, uh, well-paying jobs, um, which obviously includes expanding the employment opportunities, uh, which also would lead to raising household incomes. Uh, bringing people out of the poverty level, uh, which I think would be fantastic and would be a great benefit to not only our city, but the residents themselves. Uh, we need to continue to encourage the rehabilitation of our housing stock, um, not just those houses that are in need of repair, but also just houses throughout the city uh, in all wards, uh, which would mean strong, consistent uh, code enforcement. Uh, we also need to have landlord and property owner accountability, which also ties into extremely strong code enforcement. So I know that um, stat hiring and, and uh, freezes and, and the lack of staff is, is really kind of um, impacting that, but I would really like to see if there were any departments that were going to grow this year. I'd like to see them all grow, but code would be number one. Um, I think we need to continue to identify and maximize opportunities uh, to promote increased efficiencies. Uh, so, which would bring greater services to our, our residents uh, through shared revenue and shared resources. So maybe seeking out resources, whether they be financial, uh, through grants or whatever, uh, through working with other municipalities, including the town, uh, would be a big one because it is our neighbor. Uh, I think we need to find a way to link downtown to the lakefront. And I've always said, and, and I firmly believe that we need to be a city uh, with a lakefront, not a city and a lakefront. And currently we are a city and a lakefront. Uh, so I, I think we need to do more promotion of, of the lakefront, uh, you know, linking downtown and the lakefront, you know, I, I know I'm a big proponent of some type of pedestrian walkway uh, to be able to increase greater access to downtown. Uh, you know, the lakefront itself, I'd like to see little patios um, set up, kind of sprinkled throughout the lakefront, uh, kind of like what Canandaigua has uh, with picnic tables and little grills to, get, to give the lakefront more staying power, allow people to linger at our lakefront instead of just walking through, uh, which obviously we talked about a beach, which would be another great staying power to implement. Uh, is continuing to grow the farmer's market, um, you know, creating a lot of citywide events, which we seem to lack on, uh, and, and using the lakefront to promote those citywide events, uh, whether that be little festivals or, um, you know, again, farmer's markets, um, those sorts of things. I, I don't have really um, all ideas off the top of my head right at the moment. Uh, but I think, you know, building relationships uh, with our you know, other municipalities such as the town, you know, not always being so critical and, and giving people reasons to not want to work with us, uh, which I feel like we have gotten really good at. 
um, and that we should be trying to build relationships to want people to come and, and stay in Geneva, but also to work with us as a city council to improve, improve services, uh, not only for the city, but also for their municipality uh, and communication being key, um, not only to our residents, but also amongst ourselves. A lot, some of the other councillors have already touched on those concerns. And I think that would be great to address um, as well as uh, just overall efficiency in all departments, you know, being proactive, uh, I, I think, including at the city management level, you know, having just extremely strong leadership, uh, you know, bringing things to council instead of coming always to council and saying, well, what do you want? I'd like to see city managers and the city management team coming to us and saying, this is what we were thinking, or in some avenues, just saying, this is how it's going to be. Um, and, and just having, you know, I think that overall efficiency and, and proactiveness could definitely also save money later on down the line. So um, those are just a, a few of my ideas. Great, I'm learning a lot from, from you all in this session. So this is helpful. Uh, Councillor Regan. Sorry, I was um, on a panel where I couldn't see myself. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's hard to um, listen to great ideas. Many of them I would have shared originally, of course, but I don't wanna just repeat what was already said. Um, but uh, I, I really do wanna emphasize the whole communications uh, piece because um, with coming from staff and coming from our city manager, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, you know, I, what I would say is, is I'd like to feel the spark from, from this, this, uh, from management. Um, and it's probably, you know, it, it could be there, but, um, because we don't always know everything that's being worked on, you know, we don't know that, it, it, which has already been said that, that, um, some of these great ideas are really underway and, um, I, I would like, as, as Councillor Noon just said, um, it's, it's hard, I'm sure, for a city manager to um, walk the fine line of not being too aggressive versus, um, versus just saying, what do you want? What do you want? Um, but I, I would like to hear more. I'd like a balance there, I guess, um, you know, to hear, hear ideas coming both ways, not just um, asking us. And as I say, maybe some of that's happening but I don't think that we get the spark because we don't really know what's happening necessarily. So that's important to me. Um, let's see, uh, in terms of what we would focus on, uh, again, communications to me is, is really key. And I think um, that's been touched on. So maybe I'll get into more specific projects and kind of a approach um, I, I do feel a lot of times we lose the thread of things, um, you know, and there's so many examples out there now that I would like to see us focus on. I mean, just the things we hear about all the time, like the railway, um, and I've gotten it from residents as well. I've sat and um, yeah, talked with people who's, who have expressed their concern and their studies and, and so forth. And I think it's important to pursue this and we get little you know, inklings of it, and then it goes away. So as, as far as what to do in the, I'd like to know more about that. Uh, you know, we talked about that, um, uh, the, G, uh, um, you know, all the buildings down, or the, um, what's the word I'm looking, the GEDC, um, you know, that now we're, it's coming to the, sur I want to know more about all those things. And, and it's, it's great that they're uh, coming up now but I feel like it could be like a lot of things that the threads get lost and I hope that it won't be. Um, but more specifics, you know, if we're gonna get down to real projects, um, environmental concerns have always been key to me. I, I think we have to look at how to stop things going into the, um, into the landfill, which we have the power to do. I felt like there was a pushback on getting the vermiculture center started. I'm so thrilled to see that it's here and we need to do what we can to, to keep that active and going. And there's a lot more we could do, you know, in terms of 
maybe requiring composting, you know, and facilitating that by a hauler pickup or however that's done. Um, and making, I don't even think there's a law that we have to do recycling. I mean, we just have to be more proactive on, on how we're handling environmental issues. Um, so that would be one thing. Uh, let's see. Um, I, you know, I, I had on my list, make more vibrant. I think that the city more vibrant, I think that was covered with the idea of more festivals and, and, and things like that. Um, one other lost um, thread that has come up, I think for probably decades, <laughs> but more so recently is the whole town city thing. And um, I, I really feel we have to look more closely and more seriously at how at the very least we can start combining some services to save money and even more, you know, there's a potential of, of having the two come together. And at the very least, um, I'm, as I've said before, I'm not a big proponent of studies, but if we could talk with, and I'm certainly willing to do this, like even Hobart William Smith and see if, if a class could take it on as a study, it would give us some, some start because I don't think we really know, like this, the town does assume that that's going to cost them a fortune. Maybe it won't, you know, I mean, I, I think it would be good to explore the possibility of combined services at whatever level is possible and not let that thread drop. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, and as far as learning goes, yeah, a lot. I, one thing I feel about this council that I felt from the start that I've been disappointed in really um, is that we really are a diverse group in terms of our our interests and, and our knowledge base and our skills. We have people who are really strong on the finance, people who are concerned about things like what I was just talking about, people who are, are marketers and, and um, looking for better communications. And I think we have the components and um, I'm really interested in the finance things. It's not something that I'm gonna push myself because it's really not my my expertise, but I didn't know anything about policing last year either. And I'm happy to learn everything. So I appreciate my colleagues uh, pursuing those. And I look forward to hearing from them and city staff, learning more about the governments, you know, the way things run and should run and um, pushing forward on all these fronts, using all our capabilities at their, at their, their fullest, I guess, and being heard what, what we have in mind. I, I think that's loose threads of where I am now. Okay, thank you. How about Councillor Galanese? Okay, um, I didn't know what to expect. I did, I, like John said, I wish we had a little bit more time. So I'm gonna do what I did to prepare for this meeting as well as try to, um, do what you're asking from us also. So first and foremost, I must acknowledge the work of the city manager's team and all of the staffers in all the departments in helping us get through this rough 2020 year and uh, whom are continuing to deal with continued challenges going into 2021. Our job as a counselor and our responsibility would not ever move forward without all staff's input and recommendations. I cannot thank Lori Guinan or City Clerk for all Lori Guinan, City Clerk for all of her long hours and hard work. She honestly deserves an award or something. But I really appreciate you, Lori, and thank you. I truly appreciate and I'm grateful for all your hard work and dedication you put into th this year and last year. As a council to be successful, one of the most important things I think that uh, we need to achieve is, is I believe that some other counselors have already stated is, is balance to get things done and to prioritize the things that will move us forward in a positive way. And it has the greatest impact on our city. We have faced a lot of challenges. We definitely have with close to 50 meetings and long ones at that. Going into 2021, I feel it is important to try to be consistent in finding that balance. There's an increasing demand for more, more and enhanced services while also demand of keeping property taxes to pay for those services as flat as possible. We need, a we need to safeguard our city's checkbook 
and show fiscal responsibility to ensure success of Geneva's future. We must also be wise enough to meet the needs of all departments as they battle on a daily basis ways to be most efficient while trying to give the best services possible. COVID-19 has changed a lot of the way we do things in, in the business aspect of our city and will continue to challenge us. We must stay focused and we must prioritize the needs and wants to maintain a positive impact moving forward. And 2020 has taught me a lot from good and bad experiences we were faced with as a council and as an individual. This task at hand will be for 2021. I feel just as challenging and I'm up for that challenge. The budget was a challenge, COVID was and still is a challenge. We need to decide. And I, so we're going on to your questions now. I, I think that going into last year's first retreat, one of the things that I said is as a city and as a council, we have to decide what Geneva wants to be. I don't think that there's a, a clear path of a vision that everyone can agree on. Um, I, I, Bill had mentioned gateway to the wine country. I, I sort of agree with him and we should market ourselves that. We, we need to take advantages of the things that we have already. We have the welcome center here. We need to take advantage of that. We need to brand Geneva and market Geneva better than we have. We need to get into more budget talks and try to find a way to hire a full-time economic developer. I think that's key. We need, we need to have somebody that had hunts major industrial businesses to maybe come here to create jobs. Um, we, need to we need to enhance and enforce the codes we have on the book here in Geneva. Code enforcement is, is a good thing and we need to start enforcing it a little stronger than we have in the past. Um, we need to create an image. I think our image is tarnished right now. And we need to find a way to gain respect from the community and outside municipalities that look at Geneva. We, we've learned a lot in the last year and we need to focus on not just the positive things we've done, but if we were looking at this as, a, as an athletic team, we're not gonna look at our wins. We're gonna look at our losses. We're not gonna look at our gains. We're gonna look at our mistakes. We're gonna build off of mistakes. We can't be afraid to acknowledge our mistakes. Um, and if I was the city manager, what would you be focused on? Being a stronger leader. I, I would find a way or to be a better negotiator somebody that finds a way to close deals, not let them slip through our fingers. Um, to be more efficient, creative, and innovative. Um, going back to what Anthony said, I do believe that it is a must to link downtown to the lakefront. Doing little things, beautification, cosmetic things can enhance our lakefront right now without spending a lot of money. We need to be a little more proactive than, than we have been in the past. Um, and we need to grow together in a positive way. I think that we were all in different directions going into the first year, but we are all new. That's no excuse, just like I don't believe that COVID should be used as an excuse. We need to get it together and we need to move forward and, and really start doing something positive as a unit. Um, and like I said, we just got to take advantage of, of what we have. I'd like to see more quarterly or monthly updates by city staff, detailed updates. Um, I think John is the one that sent Canada was budget 2020, 2020 going into 2021, pretty much the, there's city of state or whatever they want to call it. it it's very well written and very detailed. Um, I think that we lack that. I'm not saying you do a bad job. I'm just saying more detail helps us as a council, but it also gives the community, the people who are paying attention, the details that they need to, to, to feel 
secure with what we're doing. Um, like I listened in on the zoning uh, update for Slauson Lane. And I felt very discouraged for the residents that live there. A lot of them were feeling inse insecure. Um, and I, I feel that the feedback from John and Molly was good, but it was not in layman's terms and it was confusing. They need to streamline it in a, in a, in a verbiage that is understandable, a little easier to, to understand. Um, and I'm gonna leave it at that. I think I've done enough talking. Thank you. How about Councillor Cameron? Okay, I'm here, yes. Um, I don't know exactly where to start, but I'm just gonna, um, I think that we have to focus on the big picture or the big pictures. Um, the big picture is, I think the city's broke. I think that our finances suck. And um, we can't break out of the 57, 43 problem unless we grow. I've said that many times, you're all tired of hearing it. But I don't really wanna be, I think that we should, yep, I think that some of the counselors have said we need to have good, good reports and things like that. But I really don't wanna be involved in all the details. That's what the city manager, in my opinion, is for. She's supposed to coordinate the departments. She's supposed to, to uh, make them operate efficiently and everything else. And I think that they are all, that's their obligation to the city manager is to think outside the box, run their departments uh, well and uh, coordinate. And um, I think that uh, counselors should have access to department heads um, on, a, on a bilateral basis when there are issues like Tom having his meeting with uh, Mark Perry or, or whatever, or with Joe Venuti. Um, I have no complaints about um, the, the, the staff uh, in general. Um, I've had uh, interactions with Joe and Neil Brayman recently, and we dealt with problem residents and garbage and, and you know just issues like that in neighborhoods where the residents are upset. And I think they've done a terrific job. They've done what they could. Um, so I think, you know, that's all city manager stuff, what, and, and her staff. Uh, what I wanna do is those identify, I don't know, the five biggest ways that we can grow out of our financial problem. And they're quick hits and they're, they're, they're quick hits and they're not quick hits, but I think we have to have them both in long and short term. I just wanna, this, this is the February 3rd newspaper. You might all remember it, but what it's got on here is it says CCMI, moves and rankles city council. And then down below we hear the Legion de deal is off. That's, that is, what I wanna to, want to do is I want city council to be involved from now on in the IDA, the next possible development project like a Legion, um, you know, and, and start to, to be involved. Now, I remember from, was in my first term Matt Horn got approached by some kind of housing operation in Rochester who wanted to build an apartment house in Geneva. And they were thinking about doing something where the solar village is. And he brought the, the developer in and we all sat down at the conference table upstairs and we had a discussion. And I, I think if my understanding is there might be five or six acres that the Legion wants to sell. I want city councilors to be at the table right from the get-go. I want those developers to know that city council wants a project and it's up, we want these projects. Now it's up to the city manager and her staff and whatever to make them pretty, but it's, it's up to us to get them and we've got a deal. And I, so I want us to start being dealers. I want us to be deal makers. Um, and I want us to get involved in the IDA in that fashion as well. It's not clear to me. I can't read the financial reports in a, in a very 
uh, good way. In other words, I, like I completely understand it. I'm not an accountant. I don't have that kind of a background. But um, as far as I can see, I, I would like to know, does a dollar walk out of the IDA bank account and over to the general fund or not? And if it hasn't, you know, and yes, we've got to maintain the roof and the GED season old building and all that stuff. But the fact is, I want to know how many dollars are walking towards us or away from us. And I want to know soon. And I want us to be involved. I want to know how many people, how many tenants are in there who've been there. It was, it, it was all talked about as being an incubator. Well, how many tenants are there? I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. I want to know, does Real Eats agreement with the city include a buyout provision? Let's say, uh, I don't know, Amazon says we want Real Eats and we want you guys to move to the campus in Seattle. They're out of here, but we got them started. Are they going to pay us every buck that we put in them before they leave. And if, if they're incubators, if this is an incubator, they all leave eventually. And do they choose Geneva outside of the IDA? Do they choose and say, oh, well, we're gonna just go up the road here and we're, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a lot over here and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll build our facility here because we're so, you know, grateful to the city of Geneva's IDA and we know they need the money. They, there's none of that going on. So what are we doing this for? Okay, I wanna know about that and I want us to be involved. I don't have to be involved in everything, but I want counselors at the table because I think counselors are gonna have some hard questions. Um, I, I, I like, for example, just, you know, just go, I want us to stay on the big picture and, and not get down the weeds. The efficiency of the departments God only knows, I'm just going to assume that they're efficient and that SAGE is taking care of that and they're all working hard to be efficient. Um, growth is a number one priority. Um, I want to be involved in these critical, I, I, I want us, our city council to be involved in those. Um, as far as, I, I agree that, uh, I think uh, um, Councillor Peeler and Galanese, You've all mentioned about this idea, you know, the idea of us being uh, a gateway to the, the wine trail. I endorse that. Um, I've been begging. Well, you all know, I love the Bicentennial Park that's in my mind, not the one that's out there. That's a horrible waste of our resources. We build, we have some guy come along and we build this magnificent or whatever strange uh, you know, uh, architectural piece that says we're the head of the wine trail. What could be at the Bicentennial Park? And, you know, remember, if you're in love with an idea, you have no, you're no judge of its beauty or value. But I'm still going to say it. I, that's one of the reasons I ran for council 10 years ago. The Bicentennial Park is a dog. It could be the beginning of the wine trail. I once was standing there next to Scott Osborne at the Bicentennial Park because I had put together my ideas and they had, some people had heard about it. I was standing next to him and I said, if we could put up a kiosk right here on this sidewalk at the Bicentennial Park and it had, um, you know, your, the, the, the parameters and a website to your vineyard, would you pay for that? And he says, in a heartbeat. I said, well, I don't know. What, would you pay a thousand bucks, you know, a season? Easily. Okay. So we could have five kiosks there along the along there. We could have um that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I I, I won't be modest. The, the, the event center stole my idea. Okay, the having these uh, uh grape trellises, but my brother uh it's got a start in Napa. And in downtown Napa, they have a park. So I stole the idea from them. They have a downtown park. It's all about wine. And they have a trellis. And it runs right down the one side of the, the thing. And it's heavy with grapes. Talk about 
saying who we are, we could do that at the bicentennial park. We could flatten it out. We could get the we could get the uh, farmers market out of a parking lot, which which disses our merchants over there once a week during the season, and we could put them across the street. It would be a magnet for people to come into downtown. It would connect the lake, as uh, Councillor Noon said. You know, we're next to it, but we're not we're not connected to it. We need to connect it. This would connect it. 12,000 vehicles drive by the Bicentennial Park every day, according to one of our counselor's husbands who remembers and recalls a study that was done. And so we're not taking advantage of, of, of this. And I, I think those are some areas where we have to do it. Long term, I think the railroad's got to be on our radar screen and we have all got to decide we're going to do that. And the first thing we need. If we, if we need anything from staff is we need to know the we need to know what that acreage is over there and whether that's between the trestle at five and 20 and the city so that we know how much of that acreage is available to move the yard they're right now in fracking on our it's basically it's it's zoning creep they're creeping into our neighborhood over there in the ward six so um, that's an issue and it's getting out of hand. Um, so uh, one more thing, a couple more things. Um, on the zoning, you know, I, I, I agree with Frank. I, I listened to that thing and I tell you, my anxiety went through the roof after five minutes. If uh, Molly hadn't said that high density, you know, put, put up the picture, it was after about five or 10 minutes and said, we're not going to be proposing high density, multi-residential over there. I, I think I'd have had a heart attack. But the fact is, is that they, they started the meeting off. They need to be better briefed. They need to understand the angst that's going on with that South Ward air, our area. But at the same time, the South Ward area and the people of the, of the First Ward need to understand that this zoning thing is important for the whole city and the city's growth will be stunted if we just leave the zoning that's in place. So everybody has to give. Now, I think that they started to talk about buffering and those kinds of things. So there's a way, there's a middle ground, but Molly and her, her colleague need, need to be careful. And it's, I don't want to over, I don't want to circumscribe what they're saying because they are our zoning geeks. What they need, though, is in front of them, somebody to run interference. And I think that's where Sage comes in. Sage needs to say something like, you know, we have to do something. There's a lot of development opportunities there. And we, we do have to de develop the land. Uh, and um, we can do it in a way that's going to protect you. The buffer zone is a, is a beginning and there's that we can make lots available. They, they talked about then more one acre lots on the other side of the buffer zone. And those people over there who want to buffer the hell out of themselves, they could all buy a lot across the street and never improve it. But then they would be participating in the development of that area. I don't know how much, but the other thing is, is there's no point in us, you know, going totally one acre or half acre lots for the entire area, because I don't think it's, we're, we're first of all, it's like gonna be a, like a, I don't know, like uh, going into business to start a furniture store. You know, no, but we're not gonna get 120 people are gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm building an $800,000 split level ranch on one acres in Geneva. They got a great development there. We're gonna put all the pipes and the utilities in the ground there. And then we're gonna get a payback on this. Well, we'll all be dead, okay? And Geneva will be in the toilet. Remember my analogy, the town of Geneva is the toilet seat and the city of Geneva is the hole. And we gotta, we gotta keep that in mind because, uh, and that's the, that brings me to the, to the town the town city relationship. And I, I don't know how, I, I know I wanna be nice. I wanna be nice. I have friends out there and everything else, but I do not wanna provide water and sewer services out there just for the return and not get something for it. 
they're going to put that development up at the top of Beans Hill and they're going to eat our lunch. So we need to get going on developing the town and country plaza. We need to get residential in there and everything else. We need to have, and these are the two words, we need to have be proactive and we need to have a sense of urgency. And I want counselors to be at the table. I do not want this to be a process anymore. This is not comprehensive planning. Okay. Well, by the way, the comp, you know, my understanding is the reason we have to do this zoning. So the, 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 the people in the four, first ward have to understand something. We created a comprehensive plan for the future of Geneva. Typically, after you do a comprehensive plan for, the, for a, a community, you're supposed to look at zoning. Well, it was a no brainer. We looked at zoning that's 35 or 40 years old. So we had to do it. But it was a big mistake to link zoning and the development of the Legion. And we need to recognize it. We need to say it. It was a big fat mistake. And what are we doing about the middle street? If he's moving out, are we dealing and buying all those properties over there so that somebody else can't come in there and eat our lunch? We need to be in the catbird seat over there. And I hate saying this. I, I'm hoping nobody else is on this. this. I hope it's a private conversation and nobody, but I'm talking to you. I want, we need to deal. We need to do deals. Remember the guy that detailed cars and lived out on uh, whatever in the town of Geneva, he'd buy an old car and fix it all up and everything else. I remember him in Kazi's. He'd go into Kazi's and he'd say, this city can't make a deal. And he, you know what? I, his words haunt me. So, you know, it, it, it's gotta be roll up your sleeve and make a deal. I think that's about, let me see what else is our critical. Um, so I, uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Peeler. Thank you for your remarks about the wine trail. Noon, uh, Galanese. Um, I offer the Bicentennial Park again. Um, but remember, I love it, so it might not be of any use or value. Um, I am pleased with the DPW. They are good stewards of our infrastructure. I've had some uh, contact with them with re related to residents. Um, I want us to stay with the big picture. Let's learn from our less, our, you know, our let's let's learn from our mistakes and urgency, sense of urgency. Okay, and um, and I want to thank everybody on the city staff um, because I'm sure after you've listened to this, you you think I'm mad at you. I'm not. I think we have a great city staff, and um, um, and yes, and Lori deserves. Um, she lead, deserves the, uh, what would it be, the City Council Medal of Freedom. So anyway, that's that's my comments. Great. Um, I should note that I have, I, I see you, Councilor Gallinese, but I'll come just, we could park or just write down your thoughts so we can get to all the councilors before I um, come back. I did somehow in my note taking lose the, uh, what would you stop doing? Uh, we'll go back and grab it when um, I can look back at the tape. But just if you see, if you wonder where it went, I must have been typing and somehow <coughs> and deleted it. That's the downside of Google Docs. Is sometimes you, you lose um, versions, but we won't lose your thoughts. Um, Councillor Salamandra. Okay. Um, well, if I was actually surprised to get the question, what would I do if I was city manager? Because I, <laughs> um, I think everyone knows my first order of business would be <laughs> to terminate Jack Monasanto for his um, behavior. And that is, I think, shocking to people that it would, but to me, there's a lack of accountability in the city. Um, I'm a, I'm a waitress and I've worked in restaurants my whole life and I've heard the, um, the complaints about morale among staff last year and I find that very frustrating. Um, I have only, I mean, you go to work and you get a paycheck and although I appreciate having a more invested and um, active role, I just, I think that the staff in the city gets too much leeway um, to ignore um, the decision makers who are council. And so um, I think that the account, I would also, I would 
I think there needs to be more accountability and I would appreciate also the department heads letting us know what's going on. Um, I found that we had a lot of trouble with that going into budget season. Um, we, we wanted to understand it and we, we were trying to ask questions and then being met with this kind of angst, like how dare you, or you don't understand what the, this department does or this department does. It's like, we have to kind of understand that because we are um, making decisions about the budget. And so um, that is just a first start. I would also reorganize departments. Um, I think that um, if we're addressing problems in this city, things that are important to me as a counselor, um, housing, grants, getting things like that, there, it just seems that there's no staff for it, while other departments seem to be overfunded. And so, um, I mean, it's just the same old problem. And um, so one of the departments I would definitely reorganize is the rec department. I would like to see it focused on wellness. I would like to see it um, have a new focus on the um, farmer's market, less on the ice rink. Um, I too wanna see the town. Um, I hear people saying that um, we wanna be good friends or we, we wanna be, but I don't think the town is being a good friend to us. So I would like to see um, the capital projects uh, have a higher rate and have that sorted as soon as possible. I think that we bear the brunt of the cost um, and they need to start to pay a more fair rate. Um, I, I hear other counselors talking about a gateway to the wine trail and I am so about it. The only thing is I think it's mix, missing a step. So there's um, decades of gen, generational neglect for wards five and six and it will upset me to the ends if I see a focus on bringing in more tourism before we start to eat, I'm saying they can happen at the same time, but if economic development is only developing to try to get tourists here, I mean, what about the people who live here? It can also be housing stock here. And so I, I think it needs to be a um, two prong approach where we are caring for residents here at the same time. Um, like Bicentennial Park, to, to hear it talked about, I mean, that is a site of resistance and struggle here in Geneva. I often see people um, who get their food at El Moro and go over and sit. So while I would like to see it about wine, there's just not an, enough spaces for our neighbors to be. So I, I worry about promoting tourism before we like look and hear about what we heard in the economic study that tools did that said that members of our own community don't feel welcome here. And so I, I just, when I hear the zoning and talk of um, apartments wanting to be higher than three levels in Ward 6 and that lake view, um, I, I'm all for economic development, but People, poor people live in wards five and six, working class people. And so I worry that our need for money is going to basically just push folks out of here. And I, I'm, not, I'm really not with that. Um, and I, I would also like to see an incubator, um, but more for residents than businesses. So uh, I have the same idea for kind of like an incubator, like the real eats get, but to see it as like um, immigrant women who uh, cook, like getting their feet in the in food and beverage, trying to figure that out, um, maybe at the farmer's market or another way, maybe. Um, but I'd like to talk about that. And I'd like a transportation study. Um, you know, people who live here cannot access, before there are good jobs here, there are decent paying jobs in other small communities. And the transportation that we have here is really just not workable for anybody who is trying to get to work. Um, and so it's, I mean, we, we could be lifting up people who are in poverty here um, 
and see these changes that we want to see, see neighborhoods improved, but we have to really look at what the barriers are um, for people who are already living here. And those barriers are our transportation. Um, so basically there'll be a lot, uh, my main goal for the year is housing. Um, I'm working closely with um, housing, I'd say experts in the community. I'm working with residents to try to better understand the housing. And I would like to see the council um, really start taking an active role in making housing policy. And also to um, strengthen Erica's role as the fair housing um, officer to strengthen the code office to say that um, we will hold uh, la landlords accountable who are leaving people to live in inadequate and unsafe housing. Great. Thank you. Mayor Valentino. Thank you, city manager. And I'm not sure if that was the exercise you planned to happen that way. So I'm going to try to focus on A through D. Um, and the question is, if I was a city manager or department, what would I focus on? There, there's a serious amount of expertise in the city manager and the staff and the department heads. So coming out of this pandemic, um, if I was city manager or department head, I would focus on where the city has been in the last 10 years. And uh, knowing we're coming out of the pandemic, try to get us back on track to continue that progress that has been made in the last 10 years and keep moving forward with the DRI initiatives and, and everything we've had on the plate. So that, that is important. Um, it says, what would you stop focusing on? I'm taking that from the seat of the city manager. And uh, what I would stop focusing on is trying to please people. I would, uh, I would be uh, more focused on what myself and my staff does the best. And if it doesn't uh, please everybody, then that's, that's going to be a, a decision that I make and a decision that I would have to live with. What do I wish council would focus on? Working together, setting clear expectations for 2021 and only changing those expectations or that direction if it was necessary based on events that would be taking place. Because there's only one way to accomplish those goals that you set and that is to focus on them and execute them. Uh, what do I want to learn more about this year? I want to learn more about the, the state and federal support financially. I, would want, I want to learn more about state and federal uh, support for infrastructure, which allows us to kind of develop some of the non-developed properties because that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks is if you don't have the infrastructure in place, you cannot attract developers. I'm going to focus, I'm going to learn more about staggered terms. And I want to learn more about our city, our city, excuse me, our county supervisor relationship. Thank you. Thanks. Councilor Galanese, you had one thought or something you wanted to add. Yeah, there's, so there's, there's, there's two things that I missed. Um, I think that it's important that we find a way to unite the community in some some way, I don't know how, but I, I believe that we need to, to concentrate on that as a, as a priority. Um, build better relationships with county and other municipalities and repair the relationships we have maybe damaged. And then one of the other things that I want to concentrate on is reopen negotiations between HWS, maybe the hospital, um, Cornell. Um, I know that those contract that contract was drawn up before this council was in place um, and maybe renegotiate. I mean, they, they've understood what the city has gone through over the last year. Talk about it, compromise. Try to move the city forward. I know that they do, they do a lot now, but what more can they do for us? Um, and, you know, if we were to get any more money from any of these or any more help, I think that we should just apply it to the debt in the general fund. And, you know, and over the next five years, we can reduce our debt. And that's, that's, I forgot to say those two things, three things there, so. Thank you. 
you know, this is this has been helpful, and if you're, I, hopefully for you all too. I mean, there are some synergies. There also are some things that maybe don't align as much, but um, and that's something I think that we can uh, start to lean into. I did get some. I'm happy to hear about wanting to learn more from um, city staff and have more details. You know, I think sometimes we provide things in snapshots and now that you've had a year under your belt, when you hear things, you'll be able to be like, okay, yes, I know where that's coming from. And that, uh, so hopefully this year, as we move forward, we can provide some more details and projects that you may have glimly heard of will, will, be, um, will stick more as we move forward. Um, I love that you want me to just tell you how it is, because that is something that um, I didn't get that message last year at all. So I'm thrilled to to hear that um, and we'll definitely um, lean into uh, sharing and and making sure that what our priorities are, you know, um, loud and clear. So that's exciting. Um, on, the, on the council thing, I did just something that you all and maybe it becomes a work session topic. There is um, a leaning between building relationships or being just stern. And there are two different kind of negotiating strategies uh, that you all may want to at some point dive in more deeply with each other. Or maybe you take different approaches for different aspects. I think you're starting on the county supervisor. I think that's fabulous to really build that relationship um, and work. We haven't necessarily, you know, the county supervisors advocate for Geneva, but we haven't in the past necessarily been aligned with you know, what council wants to do. So I really applaud you that you're starting those uh, efforts to work together. Um, in some things you, you may want to not build a relationship on, um, but you know, my, my approach is always in building uh, relationships. Um, and so I will always be leaning that way. So if there's things that you're wanting to lean uh, in a different way, it's good to be able to communicate, but get consensus uh, from your, your peers to you know, move in that direction and try that strategy for your uh, for yourself. So, um, the, all these things are, are really helpful, even and the things to to learn from. You know, we we did on Wednesday celebrate wins. I think we came out of a very hard year, but learning from our mistakes is something that we we are kind of an iter iterative group and 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 doing a lot. So I did I did hear um, want you all wanting to to know that in more more detail from us. All right. So Sage, can I just mention something? Sure. Um, I'd like us to, I don't know whether we have to have this um, in executive session or not, but I'd like to have us have two, uh, you know, our, we're, we're doing negotiations right now, right? For contracts for fire and police. Uh, for police and we're finishing up our labor one. Yes. We've okay. So going on. Um, <clears throat> I, I just, I don't know whether it's me or not, but I, I would like to know what we're, what are the basic uh, positions of the city with respect to those contracts? In other words, what are we, um, what are the sort of the nuts and bolts, uh, bottom lines, I mean, you know, uh, contract uh, term, um, increase, uh, staffing, all that kind of stuff. And I, I think that one of the things we identified at the last retreat was when we were discussing, I think, fire was we give, we, we noodled this issue was we give 110,000, I guess, a year for uh, ancillary stuff that we don't really, it's, it's, it's sort of like a, it's a grab bag of things that they need. And um, I think that that contributes to their fund for what they buy for all kinds of various types of equipment and everything else. But they do a fundraiser themselves. And I think if, if we're contributing to the same pot, I think we should have, we should have a right to uh, an audit report and know what they've raised and then specifically how they disperse those funds, how they spend those monies. I think we have to be accountable for that. I, I think the overall general message was from our our presentations was, um, you know, uh, was that. 
So that's our, that's my comment. Um, that did kind of bring up one other piece that we do have to kind of noodle out. I heard both stay big picture and then get in get in the weeds and dive in and, and work with us uh, on things. And so I don't have clear direction on on that. Um, we don't have to necessarily solve that today, but I'm getting mixed signals of you want us to lead and you want us to be doing item and moving forward, and then you want to be um, right there as well. So getting clarification, um, and I won't, we won't do it now, but it may have to be a, a, a learning uh, piece. Um, but I think that's something that we have struggled with over the last year is, is you all learning what your role is, what our role is, and that cross, that crossover. Um, you know, Can I just sit on that? Because it's funny you mentioned that because I wrote it down during the thing was, I, I think we all want to learn more about how the city government runs, but I don't think that we should be looking or asking counselors. I'm just, I guess I'm talking to counselors. We shouldn't be asking Sage for details on all kinds of stuff. It should be, ba I mean, she could just end up being, you know, hell, uh, you know, just then that, and she can move the sign off her desk and say, I'm also the second city clerk and I'm just gonna send out all this information you want. I think we as counselors sh should dive into the details on specific initiatives that are really focused on the big picture. So if we're, for example, going to pursue changing the, or, or, or let's say, effecting the right of way across the tracks in the six wards so that six warders have access to the lake, then, you know, if that's, a, if that's something that we want to propel and lean in on, we should have the details about that and what that, what's involved. And we should understand that stuff. But I don't think we should just have, you know, details in general about all the different operations. We'll, we'll be, uh, we won't be focusing. And I think that's very, very important. So um, I think I, I wrote that down, you know, so anyway. So that, that's, yeah, so Councilor Cameron, just that's where some of the confusion comes because we you were just asking about the fire company agreements and details and wanting to know that piece and then saying, no, it should be more of the projects that we we're working on. So I, we don't need to, Get just maybe when as we move forward, we do get mixed signals on what details and why. And we did, you know, we want to share with you as everyone as much information as possible. But for me, I really need the collective council priority right. of providing information on that instead, you know, because you're there's nine of you and you all care about different things and want to go and learn more. And that is where we get into. Right, but the, I'm not asking for the, in the case of those, just a one pager. What's right. the city's position in those negotiations? I said term, in percentage increase, uh, medical, whatever, so and so. It should be on one page so we all can fold that up and put it in our back pocket and walk around and say, I know what we're negotiating about. Can we? Right. Want to I feel like that? Ken is. I I've been yeah. raising my hand and it's just yeah, getting. Can we close the, yeah, close the screen share because I. Close the screen share, but I don't want to get, I want to make sure we do keep moving on what we're wanting to accomplish, but let's close it to have a conversation and then we'll go on to the next topic. There we go. Okay. I, I understand, Ken, what you want, but when you speak, it's because those are the issues that's what you want. And so it, I can see how it would be to Sage, then I want something different that I, I mean, I don't wanna be brought up to speed necessarily on the Legion. And I also don't share the idea that it's somehow staff's fault that coronavirus canceled the, the project. But it's, if you feel that way, so that I can see how Sage would be like, well, every, but the thing is, Aren't we entitled, like if I want something, a document, doesn't the charter guarantee it? So I guess we just need to have a process for how we are requesting information. If council is able to have every document in the city, which the charter says, and Ken wants 
I mean, how are we supposed to share with you what it is that we want? I would could see a process like you you need to give this much time or whatever, but it doesn't seem that just because one or two counselors want something that that it becomes the what the group gets right, when we all hold the investigation. But, but, but well, I think you're missing the, what my point, which is we have to, first of all, as a council decide what are the five or six big things first or three things, you know, whatever no, they two are. Things. So if, if housing is one of them, then that's that becomes one. And then we get the details on that. That's but, fine. But you were deciding with negotiating with these two bargaining units. So we might as well have the information about it. We have to negotiate that. Sage has to come up with an agreement. So I'm not asking, it's it, it's a different equivalence. I don't think. So that, that I am, gonna, that is one of the uh, counselors on, and I know you bring up a sticky point that's been um, an issue over time. So there is that all council directive or you wanna go in and get consensus and investigate versus just a counselor asking for something. And so I'll come up with a process just to help us time-wise, because I do get nine. I get, you know, I had requests yesterday. I was in the middle of a project uh, teamwork and I couldn't shift, but there was a need and it was last minute. And it was, you know, it just as we do our request for legal services, there is often a, a, a time sense that we need. Um, but this, we just don't want to necessarily go down rabbit holes that aren't important to all of council, but we also, it's gone to balance providing you the information so that you can bring things to council to see if there's priority. So there, there's a balance there that I think uh, we can try to, I would love to see this year, we can work out and figure out what dynamic works. So um, let me, I'll take that back as kind of like, how can I set up kind of a, this is what we need. Um, and then this is when we might, you know, give a touch back. So to see if we can make that a smoother, process. And I do like to share information with all of you. So if one asks, I, I don't always remember, it. my goal is to always reflect back and, and typically share the information um, that you can all learn from the effort. Councilor Galanese? Yeah, I mean, can we um, make a standard right now of what the rules are for meetings going forward, whether it's a work session, whether it's this? I, you see me with my hand raised the whole time. It's annoying, I'm sure but other people just butt in and I don't want to do that. And then I get passed over and then I forget what I'm going to say. I, it's, it's just annoying to me. And, and I feel that I'm being disrespected by other councils, counselors, when we, no one says that the, the same rules and procedures should be for every single meeting. You should have to raise your hand and go in the order that your hands raised not this open jumping in. I, I don't feel comfortable doing it. I don't think that we should, uh, do that um, because I know if I was to do that, I would be accused of being something or somebody that I'm not trying to be. I just, I just want to talk. That's it, and I want to be polite about it. Um, but I, I have a question going back to I think that both what examples of what Laura and Ken are both saying, and and, and I'll go right get right into it is to the the CCMI. I just feel like council should have been involved on in the negotiations and the talk with, with that whole that whole dealings um, instead of, I'm not gonna say reading about it in the newspaper, but I just feel like, wow. I mean, people are still asking me what the heck happened. And I don't like the simple fact that we feel as though it's a win still for the city of Geneva. I don't look at it that way. It's a loss for the city of Geneva. The towns, I'm not gonna say stole it from us, but they outed us by better negotiations. It's the bottom line. Um, we can look at it any way we want to. That That's how I feel. And I think that we should have been part of that whole entire process one way or another. Councilor Peeler. I just want to make an attempt to bring us back on track to start getting back on the big picture topics. And um, I think it's those big picture topics where there's a little bit of confusion on council because I was susceptible to this. We st I started out thinking big and then I slowly moved into like an industry and economic based focuses. And <clears throat> that's a little bit of my own um, issue, but we, I believe the council needs consistency. So while 
there's inconsistency in where the direction is, Sage. I think it's because there's inconsistency in what we're <clears throat> asked to focus. Um, and one of the examples is how we populate our agendas. Last council meeting, we were asked to vote on a $300 school sign while we didn't know that the CCMI deal fell through. So are, if we're gonna be voting on big picture things, how do these resolutions affect the big picture? And I don't know how a school sign that should have been put up completely autonomously by the DPW anyways, we required to vote on a $300 piece of equipment. That, that, is, that is the weeds. Why were we involved in that? I can so, see why you're involved in it. You had to do a code change and you're the authority to do the code change. So the sign can't not follow the code. So you are really voting on the code change. And because whenever there's a financial impact, we just share that. So you weren't necessarily voting to spend the $300, but you're being made aware that it would cost $300 if you wanted to weigh in on your decision to change the code. So you are changing the time frame, which only city council can do. We can't change that time frame, So we can't put a sign up with, right now the sign up does not, it doesn't comply with the school timing now, but it complies with our city code. So we had to change our city code and you'll do it again in March before uh, Joe Venuti could change the sign and not and be in the compliance with our code. So that's why that came from you. Um, CCMI, we did provide that information to you, but that was an IDA financial incentive piece. Um, and so you do have Councillor Camera is the uh, liaison to the IDA. So if there are, you know, maybe that's a, a you know a work session with Councillor Camera to say these are the things that are important with us. Can you go? talk, you know, Adam and I uh, provide the, you know, administrative support for the IDA. So, you know, hearing from you what's important to you of, you know, I, my, a lot of my takeaway is like, financial revenue may not be the most important thing of keeping a business in the city. Um, that could be one takeaway um, from it or being able to really work with them and, and gradually, you know, increase the financial maybe something that's important to you. That's something we can talk about in a future time. I don't want to get into the weeds here, uh, but that hopefully that helps to clarify why the sign, which may seem small, came to you. It had to just legally. Okay. Councillor Burrell. Um, so when, when we talk about making decisions on things that we know very little about, but have a huge impact um, on our community, you know, we're, we're, we're oftentimes asked to vote on things where we're not involved in the process. Mm -hmm. and, and Ken just touched on it. So we have, you know, payroll is our biggest expense. We're just a business. And, and we're voting on renewing collective bargaining agreements just by a recommendation of someone, of someone or some bodies um, that are, doing some level of negotiation that could be dictated by history. And, and I would think that there would wanna, you, we would wanna have council involved just as ears of, of how our, our biggest overhead is negotiated. So, you know, we, we've talked about this in the past. So why, why wouldn't council be inv invited to listen to the process of negotiating payroll and, and benefits. That's, that's our number one piece of overhead. So, you know, I, I, I think that's equally as important as being involved in economic development. So yes, it's never been done in the past, but you know, all, all nine of us are gonna vote on, on a collective bargaining agreement for X number of years that has all these benefits with that we have, that we're not involved in, in the process. We don't have to have an exchange in the process, but we should be listening to the process. And, and I'm, we, we, we need to be involved in what's going on with the collective bargaining agreements. So um, I, I think that's important. You all can provide direction whether you would, uh, we've been, we work with um, the mayor and updates there, but if you want, one or two to sit in, you you all need to decide that, I guess, as as a group and um, and just have consistency there. And I don't, um, that would be something to, 
But what we really need is, is we have the direction from you all, but if you want to shift in that direction, so see where we have already gone down a path or where we haven't uh, for the, the remaining two. You did provide direction to us uh, last year when we were starting the negotiations, which is when that's the most important because we start negotiating in, in good faith and have to follow through with that direction. You're also a new council at that time. Um, but I guess maybe get your ideas to the mayor of what you'd like to see and he can kind of look at providing us some guidance on that too. I, I, I would like to a special executive session on that matter. Is what I'm yeah, I, I would I, I would like to listen to the dialogue of the negotiations. That's that's completely different from getting a memo with a bunch of bullet points and a summary of what went on. I I, I want to listen to the dialogue and how these things work. That's okay. One more question, and then we're going to go back to our agenda, if we may, Councilor Cam. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind you just giving us four bullet points on, you know, the negotiations right now with uh, one of the bargaining unit units. Just give us four things. It doesn't hurt us to be reminded of what of them. Yes, and I can do that in executive session because it is negotiations. And if you want to be able to have us, you know, be drivers in the seat, we have to negotiate with not sharing with the entire. Uh, world what our negotiating strategies are. That's part of the negotiation. So I, see. so, um, so, I so just want to point point out the dynamic of the difference between what I just right. heard. I want to be in the session. What I'm, what I'm asking then is you I mean so our I'm direction gonna, was provided in executive se session. That isn't but what what I think you're hearing is where you were what I heard from you and maybe I didn't understand you Candace is where is the direction of, of our items specifically in the current union contracts um, the term. So if you're hearing that, that is more executive session material. Um, you have the 3% total package is your overall council okay. directive that everybody knows about. Uh, we, we share it at every moment. That has been clear. So that is still the marching trade. And you saw when, it, when the MEU contract just came to you recently, um, we shared you know, with the community how that went. Um, so that remains the directive that has not um, shifted and you um, got to see, you know, how that union contract worked with us uh, well on, on that piece and was cognizant. And you saw the, you know, the short term gains, but also the long term um, kind of changes that came out in the financial benefit for it. So and we're, not negotiating like a th we're negotiating a three year term or less. Not a five-year. Your question is a three-year term. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay. I think um, let's take a five-minute pause, and then we'll come back. So I'll come back. At, actually, we'll. I said my clock says ten thirty-three. Let's do two forty. Screens back up, please. Good morning, John. How you doing? Good to see. Good to see you. I always feel like it's the angels talking to me when some of that happens. Just a little not voice the, out of the area. Not this time. It's just me. 
Hey, Bill, I'm just curious. I've been seeing it on TV where people all of a sudden have a, the head of an emu or a cat or something like that. Is that something that's from Zoom? Have you seen that? Yeah, I, they, they introduce all the little flare elements to these kind of virtual chat programs. It's just like flare. You know, remember the, uh, there's a movie called Office Space and it's, uh, it talks about flair and uh, sort of way, ways to set yourself apart and be expressive. I'm not sure who came up with that. I thought it was sort of clever. Oh, somebody who knew people were bored in Zoom meetings, probably. Like, how can we tap into this unused boredom? You know? Mm. Well, what do you think of that idea of the swimming pool? You know, big, big... I'm open to all ideas that bring people down to the lakefront and, and that kind of give something for people to do. Um, you know, I, we're, tasked, we're tasked to think big, right? I mean, that's what this is. We had think big, dream big. And, well, you know, and you're, then... You're a boater, but from what I understand, you couldn't get a sailboat into the Geneva docks. Is that correct? Um, depending, you could, depending on the keel size of the boat, the free docks that are down by the Ramada, there's a limited, there, I think there's one slip that you could bring a larger boat to for a transient overnight stay, but any foot sailboat can't slip into those, those boat docks there, right? Eh? Not in its current state. It needs to be dredged if, I mean, and that's part of the Marina project is the dredging. Actually, a third of the cost appears to be the dredging. The dredging is the most expensive portion of the project. It's also the project that really allows people with money and high-end boats to get down to that area. That was one of the that was one of the things that was mentioned in the marketing study is that the demand in our region is not for small slips or medium slips, but large slips with people with large boats. That's what I was noticing. Watkins Glen has a lot of sailboat towers, which is sort of attractive. Uh, you don't see as many over at, at you know, Stiver's Place or even down in Sampson. So I'm thinking there must be a lack of that. I'm not sure. Even Hobart. There is. There is. There is. There is. Stivers on the state park is not deep enough for the for the for the sailboats. That's that's why they're all that's why they're all at Watkins Glen. So it must yep. be Watkins then. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a fact. And well, we can we can make the marina more interesting. We can surely do it, and the, and the, the marina doesn't. Yeah, the marina doesn't necessarily have to stain our skylines. Sailboat masts, I think, are scenic. Yeah, they they are actually <laughs> attractive. No question about it. <laughs> Mar marinas are beautiful are, are beautiful places when they're loaded with mass yep and and we don't have any mass in geneva because we're not a sailing community other than the small sailboats at the yacht club we so, could be we could be a sailing community we 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 could be but it's a uh, uh it's a it's a different economic class so now you have to develop the reason to come here to bring that person here well, we'd need at least what eight or ten feet i think to, to bring in uh, the bigger bigger boats i don't know what it is but i know that these keels move up and down so there is opportunity i, I don't know that's something for the marina designers or studiers um it's probably a six foot six to eight foot minimum i guess well you then they're bouncing around so you want some space under them uh yeah, that's that's interesting. I'd love to see that. I I've lived in a couple of places where we had sailboats like that out, and and they bob around and birds get on. I mean, it gives you something to look at. Uh, although I think regular boats are fine too. They're certainly not uh, something that draws your attention quite as much. It doesn't well, look, hopefully, know. we can have a work session or a discussion of of, of value that kind of breaks down, because I've been studying the Marina Project since two thousand and eighteen. So. Uh, Hopefully we can have a work session that we can talk about the study, what they found. We'll get it. We can get a review of what we're getting. And um, do you think there's any way to reduce the overall cost bill from what you've seen? No, the overall cost we're getting a we're, we're the the version of the marina that we picked that or that was selected for us was based on the economics of the current region, which is why it's a mixed marina. There's room for, for there's like 40 foot slips, there's smaller slips, and then there's even, there's, it's a mixed, it's a mixed bag marina. 
Um, also, the amount of dredging that we, we would need to do to accommodate only high end or boats, I'm assuming would go up. I, I don't believe that there's any chance for our marina to be any cheaper than it's estimated without making it physically smaller. And I, I don't, and I, I, I would, we would need the designers to come in and kind of confirm that. Physically smaller in terms of number of dock spaces, you mean? I think so. I think so. I think in order to get the marina cheaper, it would have to be smaller. And that's just a guess, right? That's a, that's a mathematical guess. But I believe some of the, most of the overhead is the dredging. I think, I think it, it was. Have you big boats like cabin? Wanna, hi, everyone. It, I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to. All of us have our our Saturdays and um, the sun is shining, so um, I'm going to pause that good conversation so we can get back going. All right, I think we're live. So what we're going to switch to right now uh, is just you um, a sharing of projects that are underway. It's not fully comprehensive, but I want to give you just a snapshot of the work that is being done uh, that align with your 2020 uh, priorities. Um, they're all items that will, you know, uh, have been and will continue to take focus and time. And um, some of the things you're even talking about, about wanting to do are things that are in motion this year. And so I'm going to share the screen again. And it is a just a list, a list um, but under finance, so that was a big focus last year. Uh, as uh, Adam had mentioned, the committee is going to be looking at updating the financial policy, which really is a, a guide uh, that is used. Um, also, shared services has been a focus for us. You know, the county has to develop a plan um, fairly regularly. Uh, we and, and many municipalities have not been able to take uh, advantage of the shared services. Uh, benefits from the state. And some of that is just to do with the way that the program is kind of um, structured. So we have really good resources at our state with our local government services. Um, and we are uh, wanting Adam and I to put more focus on that and um, be able to hopefully move forward. It's not necessarily a 2021 gain, but looking to set us up for gains in 22 and 23 and onward. Um, sales and occupancy tax efforts uh, is on Adam's uh, radar for um, a focus area will also be brought into uh, the committee work. Uh, we've been working on this larger wastewater treatment plant regional uh, sewer services, um, and that is that growth in revenue. Uh, it's not, a, a, there are different paths that we can go. We may need outside resources to help us with that uh, as we've kind of exhausted a lot of the uh, pieces that we know. We're going to start with, again, our local government service resource that is available to us um, with the state that they are working on a project uh, with County of Herkimer uh, that is very similar. And so we will be uh, taking next steps on those efforts. Um, under the economic development, you know, one piece that is of, uh, of great importance is that when we go under to construction for the DRI streetscape, and Councilor Cameron, I've not forgotten your request. I do not yet have the detail block by block. I will not have it quite yet, um, but we will be providing to let um, be part of the strategy. But that open for business is uh, critical for not only having the impact of COVID, uh, but moving forward. So making sure that we are developing uh, and bid is going to work along with us, but it will take energy. Um, I may need some additional resources to make sure we're really beefed up to be able to provide um, our businesses with, uh, with, the, with the communication out to everybody about how to get to them. Um, under the housing uh, focus, right now, uh, there's kind of three things in work. Uh, the city-owned property plan, which is a cross-department effort. You're asking about those interconnectedness, and that is definitely a multi-department effort. The zombie grant work uh, that has been really focused on vacant property and blighted property, which has been a huge concern for residents, that's been a great uh, tool. Um, and that is both uh, being, you know, led by Katie, but we have the on the code enforcement side, and then on the legal side, and then our community partners with legal assistance of Western New York that's really working uh, with with property owners that might be uh, headed in that uh, direction. Um, and then the other thing is just identification of community housing needs and, and a strategy. Uh, we have done in the past been uh, housing grants, both for rentals and for property owners. 
Uh, over the last 10 years, our efforts have been focused on some of the grants, but more, but also on that private investment side. And so we'd really um, like to lean back into um, some of the, our housing uh, gaps, the quality of life issues. And um, the work with Connect Geneva has also been helpful and Councillor Salamandra, you know, kind of references of really looking at, is there a spot that we haven't been going down, which uh, there is, and does it, does it rise up to something that we can do or community partner can do? So um, that is um, in the works. Uh, we, you know, the IDA has parcel sales in the industrial park and that uh, has been in motion and the financial assistance logistics. So we saw that this year with the Dove Block, uh, the, the pilot that they received um, and the other kind of abilities that the IDA has. Um, so that work will be continuing. Uh, food and beverage branding strategy. So you guys were talking about the wine trail and the food and I, that was that was making me extremely excited because that is kind of the work of that whole food and beverage um, really making ourselves uh, a stick in the ground for that. And that is a component of it, right? The wine trail. So that uh, branding strategy um, and the unveiling of the name, but also our how to be able to um, move that forward, that definitely can be part of, of those conversations. Um, and Councilor Gail, let me see if I can get, I see your hand, I'll write myself um, a note on that. If you could write down your question, that would be, would be fabulous. Um, local, our local development corporation, uh, they are kind of going through a process of re-engaging uh, in actions. And of course that is staff is the one that, you know, drives the bus and implements what they're wanting to do. Uh, but there's a really good um, opportunities for partnerships. They, they do have resources. And so really looking to see what aligns uh, between the two so that we can match that up. Um, completing the zoning code update, of course, is uh, something that will take energy and time um, and uh, from you all and then from, from staff as well. And then we've mentioned that uh, it's, we are losing um, our community development specialist in a month and a half for retirement. And um, that grant management transition uh, is something that we'll be working on and looking towards what's the next step um, in terms of resources to provide um, there. Um, under beautification, uh, the DRI street state construction. So uh, you're talking about that connection to the lake. That was that was one of the main drivers of that project on five and 20 is how do you um, make that the connection, that enticement to go between one and the other, uh, address the safety, but also to, uh, you know, really make it a place, you know, a, a, you know, a, when you're driving through a boulevard, um, but as you slow down and really enticing you to go from one for the other. So that's going under construction. Um, and that will take, you know, the effort of uh, oversight on that. The other piece that I just wanted to highlight is I heard, you know, that, that sense of, of placemaking in the downtown streetscape, you know, there will be uh, the gathering spaces that aren't really existing now. That's been one of the complaints. Um, and I, I heard you all just kind of talking, um, I heard mentions of that and wanted to point that piece out too. Um, the landfill project is something that's to be determined. That's kind of that council led working with the county supervisors and the green committee. Uh, so we'll see what that project ends up being. Um, and then another thing that you all mentioned too of what's happening, this is the short term action that our BOA grant, one of the pieces of that is getting across the railroad to the lake. Um, and the um, design of five and 20 to continue that boulevard down in that direction. Um, and so that is something that uh, we know that we cannot move the rail uh, lines. Uh, and so we uh, need to figure out how do we open up access uh, from the North End neighborhoods to there. And that, that is um, something that is part of the work that will be done this year that we have outside state funding to help us with. Um, under all the place efforts that, you know, kind of rose up as a priority for you all, the collective um, plan, putting those actions into place, the collective group has said, yes, we want to continue uh, past just turning, you know, having the plan completed for the governor. So that's exciting. Uh, you have three boards that uh, need to be filled and trained and put into motion. Uh, and that's so uh, that really comes to the 
staff and um, to be able to do. Um, and then 58 foils. This one is a hard one. We'll be bringing this to you all. The resources needed to execute those um, has been proven just difficult in terms of time. If you knew how many hours uh, um, police and our HR departments had to spend uh, culling through uh, uh, just being able to redact personal information and navigate uh, that, that direction from the governors. That, um, that's a challenge for us that we'll have to be addressing because we have foils that we need to fulfill and need to get the information out to people and we want to do it in a timely fashion and, and um, uh, running into to some concerns there in terms of being able to deliver that. Um, other things that I just heard, and I also see Councilor Pruitt, I see you as, as well. Um, the railroad keeps coming up. The main thing that we are doing on that is that uh, the access is where our focus are. Um, if that uh, needs wants to be more of a priority, we need to hear from the council of that. And then also on communication um, in terms of resources, we don't necessarily have, we will continue to update our website and our email uh, communication out and our other channels, but um, that's something I wanted to confirm if that is a priority or not. So I will just stop there of a snapshot of projects, have a conversation, then we'll go into just really where you see um, the priorities are. So I will go, Councillor Galanese had his hand up and I see noon too. Um, one of the things that I don't see, can you put that, can you put that list back up there? So we could see all the items. Yep, or, it's not comprehensive. So if you don't see something, we can add to it. I didn't put every single thing that's uh, on there. And we do, we do get the project updates. So I didn't put all of the um, different initiatives. So this was more of a sampling that I know will be uh, extra time consuming for, for staff. Okay. What do you um, one, of, one, one of the things I don't see up there that I think we need to really take into consideration, especially when we are doing the DRI projects, the DRI project of the revitalization, revitalization downtown, is that we need to have environmental up there. And I believe that it should go into economic development because it does drive economic development. I mean, we're, real, we're that close to the lake. And, you know, parts of Lake Street, I believe, is in the DRI revitalization. It goes to that point, doesn't it? Is that about where it stops? It is. And I should say that we have a huge green infrastructure project. So we remember we got oh. an additional um, I, $1.8 million to be able to, to clean the water before it goes uh, to the lake. So we won't, we can't add any DRI projects now. We will be executing and instructing those projects this year. But what I'd like to see is on, so we have a problem maintaining the banks of our creeks uh, in Bicentennial Park and across the street on the other side of 5 and 20 to get overgrown. And they're just regular weeds that are growing through there. I would like to find which types of plants that we could put there that enhances the filtration other than just weeds. There are plants they use in retention ponds and detention ponds that help filter the water before it goes to the lake. I think this is important. And while there's money um, could be available that we could find to put along there, um, I think that that's important because um, we haven't talked about anything to do with the environment and we're you know, a stone throw away from the lake. If we can enhance storm water, uh, filtration and erosion control. I think that now's the time to do it. No, I think that's great. And just, just so you can be excited, all of the streetscape projects do have an environmental project of cleaning and filtering and having the water go down versus just running through our lake. So I banked yours as an, a future idea that we could, you know, as a, as a great, a fabulous idea for future projects. Um, and then, that this <clears throat> project actually does, and HWS will be doing the monitoring for us so that we can actually know if what we're doing is effective or not, which is a great collaboration. And then also, um, you talked about the food and beverage contortion. I, I think that branding, and, and we should start, I don't know if we do, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we do, but to enhance our relationship with the Finger Lakes Wine Association. 
and have and try to find uh, you know more of a statewide uh, buy-in with wineries, not just around Seneca Lake, uh, Cuga Lake, and Cuca and Canandaigua Lake, but lakes that are further from us. And I like like Ken was saying, I think it's important to market ourselves, like he said on Bicentennial Park, the kiosk there of, of the wine trail, and you know we could even you know sell spaces to the wineries to to market help us market and pay for those kiosks. But that's great, and just um, so a public art project right across the street from there is like that, what you're thinking about that, uh, Sam Kastner's uh, sculpture has, is the gateway to the winery, has all the wineries listed. So that idea is is there um, and hopefully is is being uh, utilized or investigate, but investigated. If you haven't um, gone to see it, it's a similar concept of uh, in motion that the public art committee was able to do. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. Wonderful. Love hearing the environmental concern, and I heard it a couple times today. So thank you so much. Um, I believe uh, Councillor Pruitt was had a thought. Well, I was actually looking for a point of clarification on the police collective. I know it has to be submitted to the governor by April fifteenth, and as I recall, I think the council has to approve it. And will we be getting a copy, you know, in less than a month to, to be able to read through it prior to being asked to approve it? So we've got- Absolutely, yep. So the collective is getting the draft plan uh, to review um, today actually, and they'll be looking at that on Tuesday night, offering suggestions, and then it'll go out to council uh, and, and the community as well. And so it is slated for your March 3rd. Uh, it is, um, so please, you know, bank time and to be able to look at it because it yeah. is. A so we'll see it along with the community. If they want changes or there are changes made, we'll have to review it again. Uh, you may. So if you're you're you're, bless, you're blessing kind of the the plan um, and its policy uh, review. So yeah. So if for some reason on March third you're not ready to um, approve it, we have until March thirty first, um, and so we can always um, move that date. But we're shooting to see. Uh, the thoughts um, for the March 3rd. And if you need more time, we have some wiggle room there. So Sage, we'd have to have a special meeting. We wouldn't be able to put it in the April meeting. Yeah. Correct, because we have to submit it before April 1st. Got yep. it, thank you. So Sage, you referenced the BOA grant that's helping uh, with access to the lakefront at the north end. And while, while that's great and that's a good priority, however, uh, what is the priority of staff in increasing access to the lakefront uh, at the heart of downtown where there's money to be made, promotion of our businesses, other than hoping, you know, restructuring the traffic pattern on 5 and 20 and having people be like, oh, look, I can make an easy turn left now. Um, what, is, what is staff's priority uh, in regards to increasing the access from the lakefront at the actual heart of, of the city? Uh, and bringing people to the heart of our city. Yeah, so the, what I'm, what you see before you is our, the short-term accomplishments that we're looking to for this year. So our focus this year is on that, um, that construction of that. We also have the marina, which is the access of boats getting to us to then go to downtown. So I would say those are the two um, tangible pieces that we will be um, putting in motion this year. So there's nothing beyond this year? Like you don't, I mean, are you hoping to to work on that through some other pedestrian bridge, something uh, besides, again, just hoping people pulling up in boats and stuff, you know, like superficial thing, like actual concrete plans? Well, we are under construction for, I guess I'm, I'm confused at what you're saying. Bridge has been talked about. It is not financially feasible. Uh, it also only provides one spot in which people to, could travel. I'm not saying the BOA might come that we have to do a, a bridge to safely get pedestrians and bicyclists across. There was a bridge, um, you know, near the area before that then got taken down because of underutilization. But that may be the what that's at the schematic level. We are at the construction level for the, what was decided downtown to the lakefront, uh, and a bridge was looked at. But then one was cost, so we could do a bridge and nothing more, or 
you have to say, say like the bridge was at Bicentennial Park. The only way for me to get to down to the lakefront or downtown is I have to walk to that spot and go. And as we know, people are creatures of habit. I have to, I will jokingly say since Adam's on this call about parking, people want to park where they want. They want multiple options for parking and get the closest spot to where they want to go. Uh, we ask what we're providing here. So you can get more safely get across and have at Lake Street, at Castle Street, and at the, we have tunnel improvements. I don't have the tunnel improvements on here, but the tunnel improvements, so multiple points to go to and from. So we will not be revisiting that bridge conversation at this point. One's a fine financial thing. We're making a huge investment, huge incurrence of debt uh, for the decision that was made five years ago. And now we're putting it not quite five years ago. Um, so we won't be putting staff time towards looking at um, a, another alternative. No, that's what I was asking. That, that's what I was getting at was, is staff looking at multiple points to the, to the access to the lakefront? And you just well, said that you were yeah. the Lake Street and, and what have you. That, that's what I'm asking. Perfect. And Perfect. not just focusing on just one particular end. So Yeah, yeah. So that's what will be constructed or get into motion. Five and 20 at, what will be 2022 construction, but we'll start in the downtown area and move that way. So good. Awesome. Glad I clarified it. Thank All you. All right. So... Um, just just a quick one, Sage. I would yeah. like to add to the list, um, and I don't want to add to the burden any more than I need to, but I would like to add um, staggered terms. I'm working with um, Mayor Palumbo from Canandaigua to get their input, and I will be the, um, I'd like to be the one that's uh, responsible for that. And I'll probably need a little bit of staff help once I get to that point. But Great. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Gallinese. I just got one quick question. <clears throat> Just br brief us real quickly on who made the decision that, uh, was it the last council, was it the public, um, about the catwalk or the bridge going across 5 and 20, that it wasn't uh, financially us able so, to do? So when we were um, going through the DRI process, I guess was the last uh, piece that got us to where we are, um, that was uh, looked at. Um, it was also looked at previous studies as well. We have the five and 20, um, I think it was I called the Lake, Lake Fred downtown connectivity. Ingalls um, uh, Planning did it. Um, but during the DRI process, the design of doing it on the street uh, came forward and then it was chosen um, by the community. If you were, I don't know if anyone participated, there's actual dollars that people got to go uh, and vote on projects and that bubbled up as a priority and then council blessed that and it submitted that to the state for consideration and the state also said yes we want to move forward and chose uh, that project uh, and gave Thank you for it. Paige I want to just ask quickly last year at the retreat I thought that this council had uh, made a priority to permanently talk about permanently protecting the lakefront and I don't know what happened with that. Yep, so in the zoning, that's why you see you have it as green space uh, on that. So that is where- this So is, that's where it ended, just a zoning change, not a land trust, not of this, okay. So I have had land trust conversations um, just from that, but um, you, we didn't move forward in terms of you all wanting to, to focus on that. Um, that might be something too that we look towards if it's still a council priority. You know, there's the, the trail work group. There might be other efforts in terms of um, being able to, to do that or so. But yeah, it's great. Um, and the, uh, just to mention, there was the thought of, you know, some things fall off the crack. If, if things come up in council meetings and it's and it does kind of die on your end and it's not a council priority. We don't have the resources to pick up all the balls and run with every um, idea. So if things are important to you, really want you all to drive coming back and getting consensus from your counselors um, so that it can be shifted into a larger priority. That would be extremely uh, helpful. Okay, so the next exercise is I asked you to, um, I wanted to rank priorities to see where you where you landed. Um, and so before we get the kind of, um, of voting on it, um, 
I wanted to see if there was any other ones that you wanted to, to throw out. So I'm going to put on housing if that I hear it. Yep. And see if there were others um, that came forward as big, big bucket ideas, if that makes sense. So the larger picture, not the weeds of, of a specific project, but a, a, a larger piece. Um, so I mean, uh, if you could put transportation just to say. All right. I'm going to see. I think, Councilor Calanese, did you raise your hand? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Code, code enforcement. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Councilor Regan, did you have your hand up? I did. Um, it just, uh, I, you know, I don't think it's going to rise to the level of some of these, but <clears throat> just making uh, Geneva a. Uh, you know, a, a star green city, you know, I, I don't, I'm not expressing that very well, but something that everyone will point to and say, look at what they're doing. Okay. Is that a type of lead certification, a star green city? Is that a, is that a? I, I think there actually is a, a, a level of um, where you, you get sort of, yeah, you get yeah. that. But I, I mean, even beyond that, just where it, it, we're doing things that draw the attention uh, that, that we're that good that we're pointed to as a, as a model city. We are a climate smart community, but we haven't risen up. And Adam can, if it's silver, gold, platinum, there is uh, within that kind of incentive. And um, so, yes, there are uh, things to reach uh, towards and, and grow. Uh, anything else? I'm just going scrolling through to see if anyone else has wanted to say. Well, Sage, you might want to write climate smart because that is the that's the state uh, designation, you know, for communities. Right. I know. I think we're a bronze for sure. Yeah, we we are we're we're in there, but we we haven't. The getting to the next stage is is um, takes some effort. So that's. I think what Councillor Regan wants us to see of where we want to be. And even if it's not just that, what Councillor Regan said about the um, push to compost and recycle, that might not be a qualification, but it should be a bit, you know. Yeah, out. no, I definitely think, yes, yes, that, that would fall under, under that bucket. Of that. Okay, so we are going to break I have a feeling that one through three might be difficult for you all. Do you want to pick? I don't want to see you pick your top three. So I'm going to call on you. I'll give you um, a second to to ponder it. Last year, we didn't, like I had four checks and I put them on four different things. And had I been thinking, I would have used them all on one. Is it going to be the same ranking system? Cool. That's a good question. Because none of mine got picked because I just put one mark everywhere. I think you get a, I guess, okay. I think try to do one through three, like your top one, two, and three different ones. See how that goes. If somebody's ready, you can um, just, all right, Councillor Galanese. Economic development. Code enforcement and beautification. I think that's a. Uh, Peeler, do you want to, Kelsey Peeler? Do you? I heard. Uh, I, what well, you, well, well, code enforcement and beautification, I believe, are diluting the issue, and they should be the same line. It's not fair to choose. How do you choose one, and it doesn't really affect the other? I mean. I know a lot of these synergize, but that one is really a, a handshake of a, of a, of a thing. I, I don't know. Maybe. It's a challenging. So don't pick it. Thanks for the advice. Can, can I, uh, I mean, just to follow <laughs> up, I think beautification is, a, you know, it's like, isn't that like apple pie? We're all for beautification. What, what, why, you know, and the other one is, um, so, so I, I just don't know why that doesn't have enough um, differentiation of council. If any project we have 
has a beautification component and we should be for it. I, I, I don't think that helps with direction. I mean, um, and as far as code enforcement, I <laughs> thought that's, that's the basic thing a city is supposed to do. So are we saying that we haven't been doing any code enforcement? In we the are, under, are we, we are, saying we we've been doing it badly? Under, are we been we saying we don't, have, we don't have a lot of resources right now for We do have resources for code enforcement. We yes. use more to be able to do. You're hiring more. somebody for it. We are so more, right, but that is a replacement of already an understaffed department. We are, with the current workload, <laughs> you, I, council seems to want to be more proactive than we are able to get. There are items that code enforcement would like to get to and you all would like to get to. Yeah, and it's, but it's, just don't. Can, Sage, it's putting a win in your column right now because you're going to hire somebody and at the end of the year or your report we had more code enforcement it, it is not a differentiated no, I, I don't, I, don't the same include, place. I guess i'm not going to say a win of hiring the person because we're replacing we we're just filling what we already had so that to me isn't a win but i guess everyone has an opinion we're just asking you to rank so ken if you don't feel like I can rank um just just um share that okay go ahead counselor salamandra so um, housing, transportation, police reform, and I can just quickly say that I believe code enforcement is under housing um, as part of the Connect Geneva. That is something that we talk about all the time. It's the thing we're lacking. Transportation, because it never gets talked about. And police reform, because not only do I want to see the boards filled and operating, I want to see um, staffing numbers looked at. That's it. I want to make a I want to make a clarification. I think code enforcement is to enhance the codes that we have and enforce the codes that we have. It's not that we're not doing code enforcement. We just need to do more of it, and we are lacking a position, so we have done less. So I don't consider it a, I don't consider it a win or loss. I consider it something that should just be a standard operating procedure of a city. In it. You know, in most cases, you, I feel as though in Geneva, New York, that we've gone through the transition of this topic years, year after year, and the same with economic development, that realistically, if we were in the right position, we shouldn't be talking about those two. They shouldn't even be on there. We should already be doing them. <clears throat> I think with staff and field, we are doing them. It's just lining up with how uh, council also sees the Approach and getting more resources there too is also a good need. Councillor Regan, do you are you ready? Um, I guess so. I <clears throat> I have probably a very novice question, but um, so when you say finance, what do you mean exactly? I mean, so uh, me, I yeah. calculated it, but the finance committee. So the finance committee, you know, you know that priority was really increasing revenue. It also had to look at decreasing uh, expenses. So that was a priority. You had a committee last year. Beautification. You had a committee economic development has kind of come up as something that, and communication is something right. that you want to do. Police reform is something that you ended up as a priority um, and um, the other ones have been mentioned. Well, that's what I assumed when you said finance, but to me, I, I mean, I would go with, econo with uh, finance because of an ec economic development that I I feel that does have to be, I mean, most everything that we're talking about trying to do, we can't do if, we, if we're not increasing, you know, the, the, the amount of money we have to spend on them. So, I mean, I think it has to be first. I just don't know which one I would put in there, finance or economic development, because to me there, I mean, the economic development is part of the finance in, in my vote for it. So- <laughs> You can decide where to put my one. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's. Um, I think it it does have to be the foundation of of what we do. So we've we've got to um, put it as number one. Um, and then beautification. I agree that the uh, the, um, uh, the code enforcement is a part of that. A lot of these are just so broad. You know, um, I guess I would put that second because. I also consider that beautification to be the vibrancy question. I mean, that's, I was on that committee and those are the things we looked at. So it, it's bigger than just, you know, apple pie. I mean, it is, it's as big as apple pie, I guess I should say. Um, and then communications, but that is so dependent on the others. I mean, 
you, I, I've, and when I say communications, I, I guess I'm being pretty broad, um, but it, 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 one of the priorities would be marketing, whether that's up to the city or whether we, the, the Chamber of Commerce should be doing more there or whatever. We, we do need to market and, and get the word out about Geneva in the ways that we've talked about already. So I guess I'm going to say three on communications. Councilor Camber, do you want to go? Well, if finance is increase is growth and revenue, I'll vote for ref finance. Um, <clears throat> if economic development is growth and finance, I guess I'll that I'll be two there. Yeah, and then police reform. I think we have still a lot of work to do, and I hope that uh, we can. Uh, Hope we can manage it. I think the list is not, uh, it does not have the, the list is not a good list the way it's written. It should be much more acute and focused on what we're trying to do. But uh, I mean, finance could be, I'm number one for finance. I want finance, but that could be like, I just hope we pass our audit, uh, you know, next year. I mean, we had a successful audit last year, and so finance looks good. We balanced the books, but uh, it doesn't mean anything. So I'm voting for growth and revenue increases, but finance is a bogus term. So it was just truncated from the, the goals that you had under the finance uh, committee last year, which was on increasing revenue and also decreasing expenses and the work there um, so um, these are just the these are the kind of the priorities or at least the first five that came out of from you all last year as big bucket topics um, economic development has come up in the last month uh, for you all um, so it, it does not involve the strategies or yet the goals of what you want to achieve which are, are mixed but it's just saying you know is are any of these areas things that you want to focus in on and the next conversation we're going to have is how you want to how you want to actually do it with your staff limited time and your limited time okay so uh counselor pruitt are you ready sure i um i have to say that this is the pretty much the same conversation we had uh 13 months ago mm -hmm. and and that's part of what we had said at the last meeting that we wanted to come forward with this meeting to from not only our opinion, but from city manager's opinions for what wasn't accomplished from the finance and beautification goals that we had all set as a group last year. And so in my opinion, I think we really have this year to continuation of what we'd set last year. And I hear what some people are saying, and I, I always take strong interest in what Councilor Regan has to say. I think she has a good sense of logic. And as she said, everything starts with finance. We've got a, an additional burn rate of roughly half a million dollars a year. And unless we can overcome that by whatever means necessary, uh, I think we, you know, we we got a downward spiral. So we have to really focus on increasing revenues and decreasing expenses. And economic development was part of that, is the way that we defined it last year. Uh, under beautification, we had things such as housing code development, and uh, uh, I think the Star Green Committee. Some of those things were also listed under there. And so, really, I would have to rank finances number one. I'd rank beautification number two. And not on the list, I'd say strengthening our relationship with the town would be my number three. And by strengthening, I mean benefiting from it. It's a symbiotic relationship, but I don't think it's well balanced currently. Which could come under finance too. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Noon. Some councillors have already alluded to some of these definitely go hand in hand, like economic development and finance. Uh, so economic development would be my number one. Uh, code and beautification definitely go hand in hand, as it was just alluded to. So code would be number two, and communication would be number three. Right. Um, 
Right. Um, Councillor Peeler. Um, I want to thank you for the other councillors who echoed that that this is largely a restart from last year or a continuation. Mm -hmm. um, I also, before I put my priorities, um, I want to say that this process of picking only three is extremely limiting and it's, I find it to be creatively uh, shackling my ability to flow with my thinking process. And I also am not clear on staff's ability to project what these things look like in the future. Because I think, Sage, if, correct me if I'm wrong, you said these are just themes and you have very little professional projection on what these might translate to in the tangible world. For example, what does a city, what can a city do for transportation, right? A city that's nearly broke. So transportation is a new priority. So we have worked with RTS and did you know, past projects to help the internal flow of the, of the bus system. Uh, RTS has you know, done things to work on that inter, inter municipality, um, but that has not been a priority before. It has not elevated up. So Councillor Salamandra's you know, introducing that as something that could have focus. Um, and you know, it is, I know it's so hard to do three and the tangible things is, these are the tangible things that staff is doing to move those things forward this year. This is their, um, our you know, suggestions on, those are the actual things that are happening. Um, but what we're trying to get is that we are not gonna come every year with new, necessarily new priorities and say, okay, we did a year on finance, we're done. This is a reconfirmation that yes, this is still a focus. The police reform came up as an unknown and you all took that on as a priority and it did usurp everybody's time. It was, you know, it, it was a, and I don't mean that in a positive or negative way. It just, it did take up energy. You shifted, that was a priority and you leaned into that. And so this year, you know, we're not necessarily, we won't be starting the slate clean, but we do start to look for those synergies or as has come up here, um, that connection of beautification and code was being developed uh, last year, but it's uh, the importance of you all continues to be strengthened there. The finance and economic development last year, finance was not as much on the private. It was on the private side in terms of our own city property, uh, but in terms of business development, you all didn't necessarily have that as a focus area before. It's kind of, it's rising up and that's helpful for us. So uh, these are, this is helping to give us direction of where you really want to, you know, lean into. You know, count, just say for transportation, that may not rise up as a council priority, uh, but um, Councillor Salamander voicing it, it may end up being a Connect Geneva picks that up a little more heavy or, you know, we lend resources there so it can be, you know, it, she can run with things, but if it maybe doesn't make it to a staff. So all okay. of that. It's a helpful, it is more fluid uh, than it may appear from having you like this, but True. not knowing where you stand in this point and in relation to last year uh, is where we, we get mixed messages. So this is a, this, this is right. a for staff. Thank you. So I'm gonna keep it brief and then focus on, since this is about our priorities to staff, Let's focus it on where I believe we have the biggest staff deficiency. And that is in economic development, communication, and code enforcement. We, all are, we, we are all downstaffed on all those three levels. Those three levels will, will generally fix some of these other things that we're looking at, and they're directly tied to staff responsibilities that we can then get professional insight from and professional help with. So one is economic development, two is communication and three is beautification in that priority or i'm sorry code enforcement three is code enforcement and i and i and i still think they're directly proportional they're not even remotely disassociated see uh, i got a question real quick <clears throat> is one of these in one of these topics i can't see below i mean you showed it before but it, I think that we should be sort of concerned and in, in is a priority staff period. Like DPW is lacking, uh, I don't know what the numbers are. That's why at uh, your, the last meeting where I asked for, you know, the changes from 20, 
2020 going into 2021 because I do I know that uh, the DRI projects not start until 2022, but there's still a lot of lawns to be mowed and things that were lacking in these positions at DPW that, you know, when it comes to beautification and stuff like that, that's going to enhance that and we don't have that and there's a hiring freeze and I know that it's pretty, is it up to us council or to you as city manager to dictate that? No, that's great. I mean, knowing if that's a priority or not, what we are not going to get to today that was originally on my list is I need to know now what your 2020 budget goals, 2022 budget goals are, because I, every single department is crying out for more resources or staff. And I, I don't know if you all want to go backwards again um, or, or not. And so we're not talking about that today, but know that is a um, concern for me because we, um, we, you know, I hear what we want to accomplish and I know what our, we juggle and wear multiple hats. And so um, we could be going further if we had, um, you know, more, more resources. And that, you know, we try to lean on community partners as much as possible to make up some of that. So we are creative in, in trying to uh, leverage resources. For example, Adam and I, and, and I've just, now roped in Katie to help with the LDC and that's a tool. So we as staff support LDC. I want those actions and efforts to align with what we wanna do and they do too, you know? And so if I'm having to do actions for LD, the LDC, I want it to be as impactful as it can be and also beneficial for us. So that so it doesn't always, we need more staff for certain you know aspects in certain areas, but there's also, I don't want you to think that that's the only area in which we try to be creative. Also in, in how we work, we try to say, okay, how can we, we, we have to put energy into this. How can it serve multiple games and multiple purposes? So, um, H, can I, can I just say quickly, I've heard from a lot of counselors and I agree that we would all prefer the budget season starts sooner or at least the ones that I've talked to. So, you're wanting information about that, we would like to give it to you. And um, the second point you made, like transportation, if it doesn't get the hits, you'll see it on the agenda. So that's the thing. I'm I'm happy to do my own. If my priorities don't align with councils, you'll still see resolutions. No, that's great. And that's what I do want to encourage that you all have your own agenda items um, that you want to move forward. And so, um, so you should be able to do that. Okay, Councillor Burrell. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, these bullet points, of course, are pretty broad, but um, this was a really easy decision for me um, because I think everything starts with communication. That is no question my number one. Um, communication is not just about redesigning your website. It's not just about having a fancy brochure and a social media thing to say that we're the heart of the line trail and all of this stuff. But, but communication is, is public relations. Communication is partnerships. Communication is image and, and uniting the community. And when we have buy-in on communication from every single employee that works for the city of Geneva, it actually motivates every other bullet point. So uh, just as a really small example, um, in, a, in a shout out, which has been going on for decades and decades, um, when, when the Geneva Fire Department is involved in fundraising, it's not uncommon for them to knock on the door and to actually ask you for money. And then when you give them money, every single year they deliver a, um, a little cardboard support saying the year and we support the Geneva Fire Department. That is a simple tool of communication that is so extremely valuable. And, and I can take it one step farther and say, you know, communication is also involving um, decision makers in things like ma making the deal with the Legion being involved in the CCMI negotiations, being involved in, in listening to dialogue about the collective bargaining. That's, that's all communication there. Um, communication is also, like I mentioned, about 
your every single city employee being involved in the community where they work. And we've touched on this a little bit. And I think about it all the time. And you know, when are we going to move toward a benefit package differential between those employees that live in the city of Geneva and those employees that do not live in the city of Geneva? That is so critical to communication. So seeing every single employee at your church, at your dentist, at your grocery store, and, and they may even be property taxpayers and not renters, but this unites, what do we have, 100 and how many employees do we have? 175 employees. So, you know, as, as, we, move, as, we, move toward, as we move toward negotiations, um, you know, communication is a piece of that. I wish I knew every single employee in the city of Geneva. And, and when we get to our last section about, you know, what we learned um, about 2020, you know, I'll expand on that on some of the weaknesses that we had as a council. But, um, you know, I, I think we need to be moving in that end and, and giving and, and, and changing our benefits to those employees that actually want to be a solid part and, and actually live in our community. But, but anyway, communications, I think, is key. Uh, number one, I know I'm going way off on this, but, but, but the partnership uh, role and the public relations of communication could be something as simple as communicating and partnering with the Entre Entrepreneurial Center, which is a think tank in downtown Geneva that could actually help us with things like the GEDC. It could actually create a study and do the legwork for us. And to, and to help us with so many other things. Um, number two, uh, very simple economic development. Um, and, and my number three is finance. Maybe think of Craig Talmadge's class at the Pizzuto Center did the food desert study um, partnership uh, with us there in the grocery store in the North End. And uh, we cannot do enough with them. So yeah, so glad to hear that. Um, Mayor. Thank you, City Manager, and I appreciate you and staff putting this together um, and bringing us to this point, actually. Just, uh, I, I want to, just a quick comment about code enforcement, and I think, um, you know, this does, this is not meant as a jab, it was something that brought, was brought up at our last meeting, just more of an awareness that there was a candidate that would um, have fit well into our employment, but based on their perception of counsel and, and being a probationary employee and counsel cuts, that person pulled their application. So um, just something for us to be aware of as, as a council and how we, how we are perceived in this community and other communities. Um, and I did take a look at last year's uh, on 1 2020. We set out three focus areas selected by city council. And interesting enough, um, finance had six subsets, economic development had 15 subsets, and city public works had eight subsets. And I kind of smiled or laughed a little bit at myself about the, the, there was a snow removal action plan, alternate parking, side street, no parking, no tow, $150 to $175 fine, which I, I kind of found um, ironic that we were talking about that last January, and then it smacked us in the face again this January. So we could be better as a council, definitely. My priorities are number one, economic development, number two, finance, number three, communication. And thank you. Great. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll pause there, but I could, we can kind of uh, see um, where uh, there's energy to be had and there is cross collaboration. It's 1135. And so what I'd like to spend um, the next like 10 minutes on is your, in, your involvement. Um, so we, you know, we have um, projects that are in motion to help address uh, the priorities. Um, we had committees. Um, I'm not a big fan of the monthly committees. Uh, it ends up, you know, being a brainstorming session, and and then um, sometimes it, it has additional projects added, but we can't necessarily deliver because we've got our existing projects. So I'm open to suggestions. I feel like they're, you know, how do we have um, you all 
be able to move things forward that are important to you. you um, we have the priority or projects that will help to forward the priorities on your end. Just open to just hearing ideas uh, for structuring uh, the council involvement um, for this year on these priorities. And I may, it's gonna be, I'm gonna stop sharing, I'm gonna keep taking notes or maybe Adam, you could kind of see who wants to, to speak and I can take notes. I have to admit, I'm not quite sure what the question is. If you could synopsize that, Sage. Yeah, so last year we tried we tried committees. We, you know, the finance committee is still going. I, uh, reflecting my own sense of the beautification, we had a lot of projects that were already in the pipeline for beautification. And just time-wise, I struggled with the urge to want to, um, you know, counselors wanted to add new priorities and didn't I didn't have the capacity to really nurture new priorities when we had a full deck of things that projects that were increasing beautification. So wanting to find a better uh, method um, for uh, moving things forward or if it's, you know, the committees are an idea generation, the finance committee, uh, there is new exploratory things. So um, that, you know, maybe that one continues the communication, um, you know, counselors kind of took the lead to get that going and now you know, staff is gonna come in on one component, the website component. Um, so is there a mixture of maybe, you know, counselors kind of going in, and um, flushing out some of these things um, instead of just a, 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 one, a one approach? Are we starting, you know, if we do the committees, are we starting a new committee? Do you wanna use work sessions to, to kind of uh, flush out some of these things? So how do you, how do you, this is the how, how do you want to, um, interact with each other, interact with staff, what's the framework uh, for doing this? Hearing from me that I'm, I'm not, the committees that weren't as um, helpful, uh, at least on the beautification side, I, I struggled with um, with that, that, one, that one committee. I think the finance committee uh, had a lot of good exploration and could still move in that direction. Uh, Mayor. Find my own mute button to so yeah, um, when, when I look at this, I, I kind of agree. I think the finance committee has, has got some, some kind of strength underneath their legs and, and they will continue to move. So I want to leave that one in place and keep it moving. Um, I would almost suggest at this point to um, have council take this and, and put it in the parking lot until Q2. And the reason I'm saying that is we have enough, we have a lot on our plate right now. You know, we've got to staff three boards. There's, there's a lot of interview process. There's going to be a lot of meetings that are going to continue. Um, so instead of trying to add more, I really want to execute what we have on our, on our plate right now, which I think is very important. And, um, and then in Q2, we can kind of take a look at maybe what we want to put back together. If any individual counselor um, has the, the intentions and the initiatives and the, and the energy, to move things forward. Like I, I'm going to take the um, staggered terms and I'm gonna to continue to work on that um, on the sidelines, but um, there's, there's really council priorities overall, I think are extremely important as they are outlined right now. And to add more to them, I think is, is not gonna be beneficial to us. To build on that or uh, our differences, Council Salamandra. Um, I think that the counselors who ranked these groups as their priorities should meet and set their own agenda um, and rely on staff rather. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, just like last year, I'm not going to sign up for the finance committee. I'm going to do my work outside. So I think that the counselors who want to be part of that should not just wait for staff to bring it to them. They need to be proactive and get together, set their own agenda and not use them as a brainstorming session, maybe the first, but to move it on. And uh, we really need to start taking responsibility for uh, doing our own legislation and our own and moving our own work forward. Other thoughts? On that. Well, I have a thought. Um, did you say that you sent a, a, a list of your priorities out to everybody? A, a recent list? I, I, I was referring to 
going through these priorities of what we will be working on. Um, we, in terms of finance is a priority for um, both Adam and I. I, my focus is gonna be on the shared services and the wastewater treatment. And um, just for example, you know, well, I'd like to finish the question. You know, last year you sent out a, a landscape page that had everything you were working on, uh, which I thought was wonderful. And it was the last time I saw it. And I saw something that you mentioned that you'd sent, maybe it's this, but priorities out in order for us to, de to determine how much time you might have or might not have for anything new that we would bring forward. It would have to know what you're working on right now. And I know there's a number of things, but there's a lot of things. Uh, CCMI, as an example, you might be working on that we're not aware of. Correct. So it'd be nice Correct. to have one of those updates like you, you had provided last year. And I don't sure. think that's out there right now, is it? I haven't done an updated laundry, just the laundry list. No. Got it. Well, it'd be good to know what you're up to, to be able to tell if there's any room for something new or what we'd have to bump in order to put something new in. Got it. Uh, well, that's one other thought. Feedback, other feedback, any, does it sound uh, what the mayor was and, and Councilor Salamandra kind of are complementary together of approaches? Does that sound like a good? Yeah, I, I just wanted to know what John was talking about. Is he talking about last year you gave us priorities in progress and it was like down, it was broken down into downtown corridors, lakefront and other key amenities and then it gave the timeline. Is that what you're talking about, John? Yes, it was a, a and it was approximate investment financially, how much it cost, or whatever the grant score, whatever that, whatever, and so forth. Okay. Um, I, I, I sort of think that I'd like staff to come up with a priorities list off of the topics we gave them in a direction that you're willing to go in, and after give us as a council a chance to give you direction with parameters of where you'd like to take it where we would like you to take it. Right, so I did work with our department heads to come up with their priority and focus areas. And I guess I see that too, as you all are providing the overall focus and then I help them um, uh, with their, their priorities um, as well. So, um, and a lot, of, a lot of it is already set in stone that we, they have to do, but they also have you know, their, what they would like to accomplish too. So, um, I wouldn't see it necessarily as the redirection, except for unless, you know, we're going off, off a cliff in one direction uh, or, or another. But you Thank give you. overall direction of where you want to see. So, I, you know, the priorities and then we uh, look to lean into those. Um, well, yeah. that, will there be a list presented like Frank's and I'm asking for, or are you yeah. thinking? Clarification, John. Are you saying my own personal laundry list of the different hats that I wear, or um, collectively the list of everything that's going on with departments? Just are you? We're doing. What are you working? Yeah, yeah basically well, the that, same no, thing. I just, I guess, my clarification because I took away my listening of Councilor Pruitt was what is on um, my my current slate. Uh, if I you know, in my city manager hat, in my economic development pieces that I'm working on hat, uh, you know, those different hats, what, what is, what am I? But I, Councillor Galanese, I'm hearing more of a project-based um, and then I've gotten departments. So, um, happens well, to, because you have-, you have Paige, I uh, think it's that updated- uh, Yes, the updated- That we did last year. Yeah, pri priorities in progress. It's got uh, downtown, is a topic corridors, lakefront, and other key amenities. Yeah, so that was sure. I can send that out, and I, we can update it. We did the, with the last snapshot you got was the quarter four for 2020, and what we're going to do the first quarter. So you have that from um, the last update we said. But I can absolutely, um, and that's different than what I thought Councilor Pruitt was asking. So thanks for that clarification. Can Sa Sage, can I ask about these groups um, quickly? So like, if I don't sit on the finance committee, or I don't sit. It, it seems my motivation is often to put myself on committees because I feel like my view might be necessary. I can't do that every day because I have meetings nearly every night. What, how do, so if I don't sign up for these because of finance, I don't want city staff to think that the four counselors on there are the council. That cannot, you know, they are the ones interested in working on it. So I would think that they need um 
to give a presentation to council about what they're working on. I mean, they can't act as the whole of us in just a small group. So it seems to me that there's this process is missing a report and a check back measure. So if the finance committee met all year in beautification, I don't recall them coming to the council meeting and giving their update, looking for feedback. And that is necessary, I think, because four of us or whoever signs up are not the whole group. Right. No, I just made the note of using maybe work sessions to provide updates. So you only got quarterly updates. Uh, and sometimes those quarterly updates just because of our time were lagged. Um, so um, I, what I'm hearing, and may, does that sound good? That maybe like, yeah. So, like for example, the communications group that Bill, Jan, and I are in might come to a work session and say, "This is what the three of us thought and have been working on. Is it in line with what the six of you think? Are you okay with it?" Rather than that small work group representing the council as a whole. I think that's a that's a great idea. Um, I thought it was already going on. I thought we were yeah. already doing that. Not in the well, the work session, not in a formal way. I think the work well, I think all these committees are subject to open meetings, so we have to we have to report. So can before we get in, I mm -hmm. we were three hour or two and a half hours in, and I don't want to go down a path of tit for tat. So I'm um, looking for more just suggestions. I've got I think some really good <laughs> ideas of uh, anyone want to go away from. Uh, for the bullets that we see here, Councilor Galanese. I, I think that that list going from last year going and, and not using COVID as an, an excuse, but I think that the list is, is way too big. I think we should just, I mean, we have it one through three. We need to keep it at those three things. And like Laura said, if you want to take it upon yourself or with other council members to 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 attach yourself to any one of these ones that aren't the top three, then then do so. But we need to, as a council, need to focus and all be focused on three things and work together on. When when there's this big huge list, I think it becomes a lot for staff and for us. That we will get into weeds because you're going to feel like we're not putting as much time and effort into one of the topics as the other topic. And, you know, and if it's, if, if you have some personal connection to it that you want to enhance or bring that topic up more so than the whole council as a whole, then just like Laura said, she'll be doing that. And I feel that th that's the route to take it, but we need to have three things that we, cause I, I'm still trying to think to myself, we just rated those that list there and you wanted to top three things, but what are we doing with it? It's the same as last year. What are we going to do with that list now? So um, I, we did. Can, can I just say, I mean, I've been raising my hand um, politely, but I, I just want to say I agree with what Frank said, and, and I agree with what Laura said. And the thing is, is that I just, just while you all, I have you all here, just want you to know that there is an active interest by some residents in the city of Geneva, plus one of our supervisors and myself to unfold the, you know, and to, to research and to provide a long-term strategy for how we get the railroad to move. And I, and I, once we make a lot of progress, but given the fact that the city is starting on the initial part, which is the investigating and enabling the rights of way across the tracks, that's the that's the initial hook, but we have other interests, and we will work on the longer term thing, and we'll bring it to council, and you know, and I'm happy to work on one of the other committees. But that's I just want you all to know that, that will be going on. And one of the things is just as a note, it does it does spill over into IDA because, and I thank Adam for sending me all the documents on the IDA lease because that comes due has to be re-signed in 2023 to start in 20, it, it terminates the existing one in 2024. So this council, if it wants to have a say, instead of just a cursory signature and we go for another 10 years, we have to weigh in and we want to tee that up for council's consideration so we can give input to the IDA. So that I, I'm excited to hear 
the things that are important to you, you you're picking them up. So part of saying this is what staff is doing to lean into your priorities for this year, there will be things that you might want to accomplish in addition to that. Um, and so you knowing that you kind of you pick these, I would say, as kind of the priorities, you have a lot of police reform items. Uh, I guess a code could be, it's kind of a sub if you would, you know, if you're linking beautification, you're kind of saying we're focusing on code as beautification. That would be my interpretation of it. Uh, you do have um, efforts left from your efforts on police reform that do need to get accomplished. And I think that's where the mayor was saying, I think we should be focusing, you know, on that to cross that off and then move on to some of the other pieces. So um, you've got where we're going to be going as a staff. You see now where you and, you know, cross have priorities that you guys can uh, work with each other on as well. Um, anything else before we uh, pause on that? Yeah, Councilor. I'm going to just interrupt because I've had my hand up and tried to be uh, polite as well forever. And everyone has gone before me for whatever reason. But um, <clears throat> I think one of the problems that we're having here, I mean, to me, a problem I'm having, I guess, is the same reason I had trouble picking three because some of them are so broad that you're, you're talking about, you know, <laughs> just multiple committees that could be a part of it. And we've highlighted some of that, but um, like, you know, just to speak for the beautification committee, we did get a, quite overrun by COVID and we tried working, but you, you know, the priorities there just had to be shifted. But I think, um, yeah, there's just so much to it that where it becomes more concrete and easier to actually accomplish something is when it's almost like a subcommittee, but when there's an idea that falls under that, that we can actually pick up. I mean, communication, well, like finance is just so, you know, it's numbers and, and things, you know, see, beautification is so, you know, broad that it's hard to pinpoint, but I think it is critical to the city. So I, I, it helps to have something more concrete, you know, that is, that is, is how we're approaching beautification at the time. It's like communications. I mean, people have already said, how important so many aspects. I, I mean, Councilor Burrell laid them all out in a list, and I would add to that the whole miscommunication, uh, mis, you know, the, the the fact that people in the city were so, um, you know, one of the things that I that drove me crazy was the misinformation campaigns and trying to combat that. That's another aspect of communications. But so right now we have this little group, and we have like honed it down into looking at the website is step one. I mean, I think we have to be able to take components and some of the, the, you know, to say, okay, our priority is beautification. It just seems too broad to me. So that's, that's where I'm having trouble identifying a, a route ahead. And uh, absolutely. And that's where we say, these are the big topics. Uh, this is where staff is going to take them. Um, you the good examples of communication you all said okay we're going to tackle the action is the website that's what we can do and you're establishing that piece today we don't have time to go into those kind of weeds that's why we have the idea bank which i'll send um just kind of as the record and so we don't lose those ideas um but this wasn't the time to not only get into the the weeds and just for raising hands i can only see four at a time because i'm taking we're trying the whiteboard approach um, so um, that's that's the disadvantage of trying to do something where you can visually see it at the same time. I'm just going to throw in to a push to meet live. Yes, thank you. This would not be happening. People wouldn't be sitting here frustrated in their dining rooms because we would see each other. I know. I just want to say quickly. I know Jan that that is so important to you, but I cannot hear when people wear a mask, and I need to look at people's lips. And so it's not going to work for me. As long, no matter how far apart we are, I I'm not going to hear you. So stay home. I will. That's what I'm doing. But and that I push, too. I want. It's not just about COVID. It's that the actual masks mean that we cannot hear people. 
So the, the other piece for us, and, and I, I'm totally open if, if there's some of you that want to be in the conference room, you guys can be, you won't, community members won't be able to see your face as much, but I do, it is better when we're all in a room together. But when we spend more than an hour, even masked, if one of us gets COVID, we're all out quarantined in our homes for that 10 days. And that's the other piece that I just cognizant of, of, of not um, that potential besides the health risk, but the potential of the disruption of everybody's uh, working patterns and home life patterns because of having to be quarantined if uh, one of us does. So that was that's the other piece of it. But if you guys, if some of you want to, I understand. I would love to be in a room. In fact, when I was planning this retreat, I was seeing us in the housing authority room. Like I had to remind myself that, oh no, I'm on Zoom for this. We're not going to be together. So um, I feel it too. I and I under I understand. Um, but um, you say count me out for the in person ones too. I, I am concerned about COVID. Mayor. City Manager, I, I have a hard stop at noon. I have another meeting to go to. I'm not sure if there's any wrap up. We need to. We're not going to do a wrap up questions, but I just wanted to get confirmation, and I'm going to stop sharing so that I can see, and we can do. Um, we want to get the communication out to the community about the police review board, the body camera task force, and the police budget advisory board. And I had sent um, saying that we would be putting out the communication. Uh, this next week, and the idea would be that people would use our engaged form, which already has the three boards, to do the initial um, saying, yes, I'm interested, and then we would follow, staff follow up with a question for them to share why they want to be on the board, and then we would provide all that information to you all. You all would have to decide, we'd have a, a like a month period for people to apply, and then um, have, you know, mid-March, mid-April being able to have you decide how you want to review applicants um, interview and the goal would be to have the May or June meeting in which you would be seating on that. I did throw out one cog in the wheel alternative of the ta body camera task force and the police budget advisory board is similar work to what the police collective has been doing. If you wanted to consider um, a change with those two to have to ask the police collective to do that, um, that would be something we bring forward to the March meeting. If you don't want to do that, we'll just continue path forward for you all to seat those three boards. So I guess my thumbs up question is, do you want to keep it as it is the three boards um, and just moving forward for filling those seats? I've got one head, two, three, four, five, one, okay, we're at one, two, three, four, five, four of you to do that is anybody so who wants to, does somebody three I, boards I, three boards for what specifically the three the three things so you have, you just, have the three boards that you have to fill now body camera task force um police budget advisory board and the police review board so there are three boards in which we are pushing we're wanting to push out communication for people to express interest they can sign up for all three it gives you you know more opportunity they can sign up to, to be considered for one and the suggestion, the only suggestion that we had was, would you want to take, um, there was concern about the number of seats you had to fill, ask the police collective to do the body camera task force and the budget advisory board. But that would mean a change that we would bring forward um, in, in March. So I don't, I guess Hold so. Up. Just, yeah, just yeah, for ahead. clarity, just for clarity, the, the, the feedback you're looking for is, whether we advocate for the collective to do the body camera work? Okay, so let's, that is, you no, know, not advocate for, but if you want to, that would have, <laughs> you would not be filling those, trying to fill those three seats now. So if you want to just keep it as it is and go out to the community and say, we're looking for applicants for the three boards, as you all did, that's what I'm wanting to see hands up. I'm seeing, yeah, I want to go out to the community. That sounds like what we originally planned for and what- Great, so I've got a majority of you. So um, we will this next week be pushing out the three boards for applicants to come um, forward through their engage form and we'll communicate that out and then we'll share that information so you can also share it. We're gonna give them a, a month kind of feedback time 
period till about March 12th so that it's a defined, then we can um, get the information to you and we'll follow up with applicants to get them to verbalize or you know to write down why they want to be on the board so that you have something that you can read prior to. I think I saw Councillor Pruitt and Councillor Noon, is that correct? Councillor Pruitt? Yes, I, I, um, and, uh, I, I know the, uh, the question was, could we transfer two of the, uh, the, the resolutions over to the collective? And can't that be split up? As, as an example, I think the body camera footage is probably pretty well managed under the collective, perhaps better than it would be under the review, but I think the budget review would be better under the review board. And so is it possible to split those functions up and keep uh, the PRB and the budget review under one umbrella and transfer the, uh, you know, uh, the body camera back over to the police collective? So I guess I'll look for a hand raise. If you wanted to change your, what the direction of the body camera task force for having a separate board and change it to have the police collective to do. Is, and the guess? second question is because we had the same people on more than one board. That was yeah, you can. I mean, you have that now where you have people serving on more than one board. There's, yes, you could. I, I just have a question on that. <clears throat> um, I, I think the, the work of the collective would, would be good information for the body cam um, committee for sure. But um, I have to be reminded, perhaps Councilor Noon can do this for me, as to where we ended up in terms of police involvement. Because that was part of the whole concept here is to have these be primarily in the case of the P PBR uh, um, uh, or PRB <laughs> uh, it, to have that be a civilian board and I'm not sure where we landed on the on the um, camera uh, one but that was an important component to be considered. Right. So um, with the board the camera is more of uh, staff support and information not at the table the collective is police officers Lieutenant at the table working with. No, I understand that. I'm just saying I don't want to give the body cam over right. to them if because I know there's police on that. If that was actually what we said would not happen. I'd like to make that point too. I've been raising just to say that at this point, I've had so many people enough to fill the board, all of the boards reach out to me trying to be on the boards and figure asking how they can sign up to be interviewed. And so oh. I would hate to turn it over to the police collective when that's not our initial thing. I think maybe in two months, in a month, if we see that no one wants to sit on the budget board and they're all for the PRB, then we have a new problem, but it's not a problem yet. Okay, I got, I got a majority. We don't have to necessarily discuss anymore. We'll send out the communication um, next week and, and um, you guys can promote it as well. All right, we won't do our last question. Councilor Galanese, you have something to say. I have one quick question that when you send this stuff out, I would like to know because this is a new law, does it have to follow the charter and the charter is written and uh, be no more than a bare majority of the voting uh, population of Geneva? on these boards, commissions, or these three boards? Bare majority. That's yeah, a bare like, majority of any political No, party. There's, there's not that requirement to my knowledge. Okay. Can, can, you, can, can you look to see, can we no. get clarity on that? We did, we, we, I believe we did get legal clarity. We do not need it. So you're fine to just, we will not be doing that. That is not a requirement that's needed for this. Uh, for any of those boards. Um, so I'm going to wrap up because this was on our retreat. Uh, Councilor Peeler, is that a question or is that something you can do offline? Or Nope, it's a question and I don't know if it needs to be answered now or maybe in our next public work session, but based on the priorities that we outlined, I would be curious to hear about the forward thinking um, ideas from our staff about what are the both economic or possibly tangible uh, improvements the city can make based on those topics because while we while we are charged with having the overview of the big picture I'm really I'm really concerned that we're not getting the executable uh, items of, of what our staff think can be done in those specific areas based on their experience and professional opinion sure we can share what we're doing and like what can we do what can we build where's it going to be 10 years 15 years all that stuff I'd love to hear something like that well, we're assuming that Sage is doing that for us, telling us what staff wants to do. 
Yeah, we, we have yep. lots in motion. We can talk yep. about it. Yep, yep. Thank you. Great. All right. So thank you for time. I did hear some frustrations. So on the formatting, I'll take that into consideration. Um, I, I also think the frustrations just continue. Uh, to me, it's, there's some positives there. We're starting to work together differently. I hope to see that uh, transform. I, I got some good feedback, um, some conflicting feedback, but I think all of that is important to trying to figure out the best way for all of us to be our best selves in our role. So thank you very much. Um, and that's all. Motion to adjourn. Councilor Salamandra. Well, um, second by Councilor Peel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed?